Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second upper semifinal of Ascension number seven. Mask, we are going to watch Hapsea versus the Shambler. Apparently, Hapsea actually streamed this set, which is uh, great. And we got some very highbrow commentary from his Twitch chat as well that some people Fagudo screenshotted, uh, which I thought was funny. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, of, of subtext or, I guess, pretext that comes into this match, right? I mean, we think about it. These two players have been practicing against one another before the tournament began properly as a way for, essentially, Shambler to help Hubseo train up. And now it's a situation where Shambler might have trained him up too much. And, of course, on top of that, Hubseo, a very accomplished individual relative to everybody else in the pool of players that we have in, like, pre-existing competitive success and and performance. So when we look at it from that perspective, as he's the top of the ladder over on the uh, StarCraft II ladder for Grandmasters in North America, I think he's like, you know, top 20, top 30, something like that. And uh, either way, has at least attained such heights in the past. We have to think about it like, okay, this guy knows how to play a game. He knows how to take it seriously and, and compete. And he also upset Hamster, uh, a very worthy competitor, even if he's not very confident, like what he said uh, ahead of the three crow set uh, that we casted this past Saturday. So yeah, coming into this, it's a really interesting situation where Hapsay has been training upwards and Shambler so far in the tournament doesn't really feel like he was tested yet. Hell yeah. God, I hope there's typing. Oh boy. Well, listen, I don't know if you read the chat that was exchanged in Special Bus, but at some point Luciferia simply wrote, ha ha, typing. So I assume they're Yes, probably... <laughs> I, I saw some comments. Yeah. And of course, uh, Hupsia's chat was yeah. full of the typical Twitch Reddit audience with yes. people with room temperature IQ. So nothing really to expect there. But um, the two players themselves, hmm. however, they are both accomplished typists. Yes. Yes. And they have, uh, of course, there's that series that they played earlier. I still got to cast that final game. I've been really trying to get some of my work done. And so I haven't really had a chance to catch that. That said, I had a four hour Warcraft 3 replay. That <laughs> so things are good luck are out of control things are fucking out of control my man so but uh what i saw out of that series was uh typing yeah and it was i hope the the last one replay also has typing but there's definitely been some typing so this uh this make i figured that every single time upside gets into to a match with anybody and you know, has some tread of difficulty. There will be some typing involved, especially if he's streaming, because yes. I think it's part of his streamer persona. Yeah. So, um, Shambler just types, and <laughs> yeah, well, it's like part of my strategy to unravel him is to get him to type. And, well, uh, you know, it's also a matchup that uh, Hapsaya has at least vocalized some concerns about mm. and shambler has uh also ever been eager to type in response yeah. so it's like <laughs> there was this i woke up and i read through that uh there was a discussion there about six pooling and so hafsai brought one of his uh friends and uh nathan and not quite as as commanding as nat but Nathan, mm. and, and apparently Nathan was just like six pulling him every single game, <laughs> and I guess he was like losing every single game or something. I don't know. Yeah. But um, six pull is uh, obviously not quite the same as four pull. You have more workers at start, so it's not really quite as committed. But uh, I've seen so many six pulls die to trying to take out the workers. Yeah. And it seems like well, a well executed six pull might be really strong, but it seemed like Hupsia really wasn't having any issues with Zerg in his last couple of matches. And it figured out a pretty reliable opening. Yep, and he knew yep. how to worker drill and all this other stuff. But I think if there's somebody who's going to be able to reliably a six pull up, it's probably going to be Shambler. Well, that's and true. <laughs> maybe we'll get to see some of where these commentaries came from. And uh, if Hupsai is able to adapt to that, should that happen, then how does he adapt and how does it go from that point? Or will it just be a 3 0 six pool fiesta? I think no matter what it is, everybody's going to come out winning. Everybody, especially the viewers at home. So, let's introduce or talk a little bit more in depth about Hapsaya himself, the streamer, the StarCraft II Grandmaster, the guy with the shrug and the hands in the air. Uh, obviously, he does like his grand libraries. He did that versus Shambler mm, in the past. Yes. And he picked a map in which he had done it in the past as well, Nitro Valley. That's going to kick us off here in this set. 
Hapsaya has really, like, re-engineered his play a lot, where he just does things that look completely different from stage to stage. I don't think he'll have re-engineered it quite so much, coming away from Hamster's set and into the Shamblers. Uh, and so I'm very interested in seeing what ends up coming of that. Because as far as I'm concerned, right, we, we look at this and we think to ourselves, okay, he defeats Hamster. That's already kind of an upset, right, where Hamster, obviously his weakest matchup was versus Protoss, so that contributes. That must mean that Hapsaya has to have some extra points when he goes up against the Shambler in terms of, like, do we predict it for one player or the other? But the Shambler is also much stronger as a, as a ZVP player, right? In this matchup, mm -hmm. I think he's a lot more formidable. So we're really going to get Hapsaya tested here, I think. Shambler's ZVP practice is predominantly against Mystery Meat. So, yeah, he has all the tools he really needed in terms of practice up to this point. That said, Mystery Meat's not been here. And Mystery Meat was playing Terran recently. Yes. So, very topical recent practice, maybe... Not so much. I think he played against Veek, which, you know, is still pretty good, but very different than Hapsaya. And Mr. Meets also, to an extent, very different against Hapsaya. Yeah. These players, uh, again, having watched that last match, and they've played more since then, Hapsaya has changed a lot since then. Yes. Judging by the, you know, the matches thus far, I think if you see a grand... Library first, Hapsaya's fucked. <laughs> I think Shambler's like probably the last person you want to do that against. Yeah. Because of his aggro and the fact he has a read on that matchup and he's going to be looking for it. Yeah. But Hapsaya had a lot of uh, success with the Lattice opening, which, you know, I was chat about that. The Lattice can be more risky to get because it is substantially more expensive. But uh, once you get Vassals out, you know, they can help you deter aggression so long as you can survive to that point. That said, while many Zergs may be thrown off by this interaction, I don't think Shambler will be. I think Shambler mm. will be quite happy to sit back and build nothing but Droleths for like 10 minutes, just <laughs> like the Blime, really. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't think, like, I think it'll be hard to throw Shambler off in this unless they get each other typing, and then at that point it's basically anybody's guess of who gets the most tilted. But uh, if I had to guess, I would say Hapsaya being... An individual who uses Twitch and has to play by, like, these, you know, kindergarten-level TOS rules they have. I'm sure he is very accustomed to trying to control his tilt. <laughs> Whereas Shambler, on the other hand, definitely can have adverse effects from getting tilted. So, while we haven't really seen it too much as of late, it's probably more or less because he hasn't really gotten super tilted as of late. Because, well, to be fair, a lot of the matches he's had have not really been that difficult. Yes. Or he was, like, against Hamster in the last... Uh, Ascension, he wasn't even at his home. He was in a hotel or whatever, so yeah. that wasn't even like a good basis to begin with. Some, yeah, so, mitigating factors for sure. This uh, th this match definitely has a lot to look forward to in the regards of that because I think Hapsai has a big advantage in uh, if things get heated. Mm. That uh, well, he has you know his chat to back him up and give him <laughs> emotional support, you know, both yeah. figuratively and literally. And you know, he's just accustomed to that whole road routine in general. I mean, he was just telling us before about how he was like. Pause spamming against somebody. You know? Like, he, 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 yeah. He's, this is just another rodeo for him. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think it'll bother him if he drops like you know zero and three. I don't think he'll really come out of that. He might be a little salty, but I, I think he rebounds from that stuff very fast and very easily, and he has the experience to do so. So I think that's definitely an edge for him if the uh, the matchup starts going back and forth or he starts having a bad time. Is I don't think he's going to easily tilt out of that. Yeah, well, on the other side of the whole ordeal, we are going to be looking at the Shambler here. He has technically won a trophy in the past, if you believe it. He won the second ever mm -hmm. Ascension Tournament. That was a very different looking situation, and the field of players was also very different. You know, Nablime mm -hmm. was still a budding player back in the OG Ascensions and didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, he obviously wasn't even playing in Ascension 2, so the field was more limited as far as high-level players were concerned, and the Shambler was able to defeat Mystery Meat 3-1 to one in a set of the Grand Final back when we had Best of Five Finals. And mm -hmm. now looking at this one, though, it's been so long since his last tournament. It's actually been really a, quite a long time since the Shambler has made it to a Grand Finals, even. So yep. remember that at the, the winner of this will face Nablime for a spot in the Grand Finals. So we're not quite there yet where we're deciding who's going to be there, but we're pretty close. And 
If Shambler wants to take this tournament, especially since he's thinking, well, Mystery Meat's not here. That was my only competition. He said that in one of the interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if that's really going to be true, he needs to also be able to defeat Hapsaya and, and put him in the ground and say, like, listen, dude, you might be good in StarCraft 2, but this is a different ball game, you know. Maybe uh, maybe tilt him, maybe tilt his chat. I don't know. Send some couple of messages here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. But who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to come of it? Um, I'm, I'm really quite excited to see what Shambler has in store for us because, you know, th that's the thing is you said it earlier, all of his er matches so far have kind of been easier uh, when, when it comes to matches in this very tournament. This is the, actually the first time Shambler will be tested and you can't say that for Hapsaya because Hapsaya went on against Hamster and it was a five game set and it was very competitive and yeah. either player could have taken that one at various points. So coming into this one, I mean, there is no infinite velocity too for our decider. It was actually removed by Hapsaya his uh, only ban, and Shambler mo removed High Water, and then I want to say he removed... I can't remember exactly the, the last map, but I wrote it down earlier. Um, oh, it was Impetus, probably because it's the newest map. And so that, that leaves us with a couple of four spawn maps, you know, Nitro Valley and Victory Square. It also leaves us with Sideshow. It leaves us with a couple of, you know, a couple of the, the mainstay two spawn maps like Derelict, right? So, like, in that situation, we know what the maps are likely to be for this set, it feels like Shambler, he has the more recent experience, but he doesn't have the more recent, like, testing of his skills and, like, forcing him to innovate. And now Hapsay is going to have his own opportunity to sort of say, hey, I know what's going on. Though. I've done a lot of practice in this matchup recently. And, you know, maybe some of it is against six pooling, but I, I don't know. I don't know if Shambler's even going to bother doing that. I'm not sure if Shambler's been keeping up with that because he himself has been very busy. So we'll, we'll have to see. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward for the Shambler to 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 get a, a couple of wins on the board here. I think it's unlikely he goes away winless if he goes away at all. Mm -hmm. So I suppose we'll see if uh, there's going to be a Nerf Zerg emoticon coming out of this. <laughs> I guess uh, this is the best of place as any as you can try to gauge the balance. You know, if the balance of six pool or anything like that is particularly off. I don't think there's many other cases you're gonna get to really get eyes on that in a yeah. really objective sense i think that this you know maybe like mystery meets paradise you know, a whole bunch of games might give you an idea but since he's not here this might be the best way to do it because now we have someone who's coming in here with a very very different play style so we have a whole lot of examples of other play styles but you know how high is showing is changing things up doing things different and even willing to do something that would normally can be considered Extremely silly, like uh, <laughs> Grand Library yeah. first, which uh, I just—it's funny because I told him that I told him the blind did that once, and he's like, "Oh, I'll try that." <laughs> so that's yeah. all it took. But you know, maybe we'll see that in the set. I don't think it'll be for the first match though, and no. I'm, I'm thinking we might as well get to it, right? Nitro Valley, yep. a four spawn match. You ready to see these two in action? Oh yes, I want to see what kind of magic comes from these two sitting together in the parlor having a drink just good old times await us i'm sure let's find out this is the upper semi-final number two the shambler versus hapsaya And here we are, the Shambler in the top left of Nitro Valley, Hapsaya in the top right. Mm, now, one thing you have to keep an eye out is that uh, we're not actually sure precisely what version of the game that these replays are on because that wasn't communicated to us. And I don't think the players are even actually probably aware of themselves. <laughs> so yes, there's this is a very slight possibility that something will go off. I don't know what the difference between the last couple of release versions are, because I think it was probably just bug fixes. The right? difference is there are names in the top right, which obviously shouldn't change anything, but probably does. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out. shouldn't, but, you know, <laughs> Blizzard's very fragile. Both players are going in the completely wrong direction. Yeah, we already, already are seeing a defensive pylon as well. There was some discussion. Uh, Veek was saying that, you know, we originally we wanted to add a power field to the Nexus a long, long time ago. And then we realized if in order, in order to do that, we would actually need to re-implement the entirety of the power field. But this is a very defensively placed gateway in the back. This must be an adaptation from when he was fighting against uh, Nathan and Ansi, I think is how you would say his his uh, gamer tag. I don't know about so. this, though, because, like, the Zeths can still kill this. Yeah. You want to put the pylon in such a place where if they dive it, you can just drill them. 
But in this, your scribes actually get funneled into it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I don't think this is as, you want more space, but I, I don't really think it's as good of a spot. But uh, I mean, Chandler's going quas first. But he's got he's, some gas too, so. He's just, yeah, I'm probably gonna see some gnats come out. I mean, <laughs> we see a zealot come out of this, then yeah, there could be something, some type incoming as a result of that. They're both crossing each other and going into the wrong places to finally head in the right direction sometime after. It is gonna be a zealot first, and yep. those are gnats first. Hmm. Yeah, so. Well, what are we going to see yeah, as a response? first spot map, right? Yeah. They've gone in the wrong direction, so that's already an absolute disaster. I think, <laughs> I'm sorry at this point. I can already see the typing. by building a warden, you know? Yeah, I can already hear the typing in my in my brain. Oh, well, it's a dragon incoming, so, yeah. So, he's, he just has to uh, injure the tickling. Yep. For a little while, which, I mean, the dragon is already quarter way done. This isn't going to end the game. He might lose a worker or two if he's not amazingly careful with his micro here is this scribes like dancing in and out of the worker line as if tempting shabbler to reach oh, no. into his butthole up oh, it begins yeah one worker will go down and down oh. so, he's he doesn't really need to do it this way he can move the one that's doing that but yep. tickling has commenced yeah, Shambler won't be able to get any more kills here. Or shouldn't be able to get any more kills here. I say that. He's really diving in for it. Okay, well, <laughs> three scribes dead. And Shambler has already begun the tilting. Look at how many minerals were banked up during that. Yep. Both of them are floating a lot of money to do that. And there is one idle scribe. Oh, no, now he's moving. Yeah, he's thinking about he's taking an out. expansion behind this. But he queued up a Drakadin and he queued up a Warden, right? So that's a lot of minerals already gone uh, down the drain. And, yeah, <laughs> stationing himself very defensively. This is the problem, right? Hapsaya is thinking to himself, this motherfucker, he's going to rush me. But he's not really. Like, he's just taking no. a base. And there's no rescout, right? So I, I don't know what happened to the scribe in the interim. It looks like it must have died to Quasilisks or something. Now, there are some Quasath units out. And I think that's the natural sort of way of things, is you take your expo, uh, and then you, you get ready to uh, posture aggressively because he's gone for the Dracodins. He's gone for the Zealot. He does kill Shambler. That is Shambler right there. That was the yeah, that he was died. Shambler. He's, he's dead now, so... Uh, he's moving out here, which is uh, quite risky because he has only three units. And I mean, it wasn't a hard committal. It was fast Zets, but he pulled off of gas immediately after the first made Quasilus and then has just made some Yeah, this, so, <laughs> this, is, this is a really fast. awkward position here for him to be in, right? I, it's almost like he's, he's thrown the hamster lessons by the wayside. Uh, and, you know, he could have sent just the Zealot in to scout, and that would have been great because then you keep your Dracodins on the high ground. There is a second gateway yep. coming. I can already tell you, Mask, that uh, if the rally point is going to be south, there will be a unit stuck between those mineral fields. So I really hope that there's some typing as a result <laughs> oh, no. of that. I mean, oh, no. I don't know. This what... is the other problem, putting them so close to the minerals, right? Yeah. It does cancel now, that. Chandler has to be a little careful about this because, oh, now the Draken went out there to kill himself. Yeah, it's yeah that's a little awkward there. The Draken will bugged. indeed get, it'll get one shot off before death. Something was canceled. Okay. There might have been another pylon. He realized. Oh no! It was the Nexus yeah. down here. He just yeah, the Nexus had yeah, to cancel that. It was this, this zealot's gonna get trapped, isn't he? <laughs> he's, he's gonna. It's be not stuck. even a dragon. It's like if it's a dragon, at least it can shoot from the range. But no. Now here comes the attempted break. He can just end up surrounding the dragon, which is yeah. See, like I said, yeah. if they're behind there, you can't help them. Yeah. Like he can't even offer DPS on the scribes at that point because yeah. they're all the way around. Now he's trying to drill these off the side here, but they're they're up. he finally jostled it off. He's forming the wall, the Alamo. Hey, the Zealot doesn't get, get stuck. stuck. That's that's a shocking situation. It was just the right kind of angle. Yeah, the, the drill is working up pretty well. And remember, Shambler <laughs> behind I mean. this, he's got uh you know, he's he's actually got less workers, but the problem is right now it's like the way that the game seems to be shifting, there's more Zeths on the way, and there's no splash damage, right? I mean the workers are relevant in the moment because Hapsai has six hundred and fifty minerals he can't <laughs> spend. He has no way to spend it at the moment. Oh no. Unless he does drop the grand library. The zealot, five seconds to detonation. Oh wait, he uh, did he correct it enough? He he got out. No! The oh, oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> it's a disaster. You know, you could hop a worker or two over there and then see if he can hop the zealot out. Yeah, well, then his workers are trapped in there with him. Yeah, that's fine. That's better than the zealot. You need the I zealot right now. you can try to exchange it. Yeah, he's really screwed uh, in some city there. He's fucked. It's... 
I feel like that, yeah, that gateway could have stayed alive way. a little bit longer there, but here come the quasis to break down the warden. Yeah, the and my man, my man. <laughs> it's over. Poor old Hapsaya. Yes, He's not going to be able to start off on a strong suit here. He's drilling it so hard, the, the last dragon is sitting there not doing anything yeah. because he's so occupied trying to save the rest of his base. Yeah, now there's 26 workers behind this. Chambler has sealed his fate. Hapsaya will be going down 0-1 for the opening. At least his zealot can, is safe in that area. Well, he's going he's gonna to endure the lash of the spanking at least for a little while here. Oh, he's declutting his own dragon. Never mind. Mm. The last Zelda can only just sit there and watch yep. because he's fucking trapped. Oh, he did type GG. That's uh, more oh. than he's done before. Oh. He's a gentleman. A gentleman and a scholar and a man of culture. And yeah, you do have to keep in mind that when you're on extra high brain cells that uh, even the drilling is a lot harder. Well, it might have also been... Um, since it was just the two of them, right? It might have actually yeah. been that they were on low and there was some hitching. So it could have been one or the oh, other, right? Maybe. So yeah. it, it's not 100% sure. But either way, we'll assume that they have rectified that situation. Now, we will be going on to Derelict for the next match. Uh, after that first game, or at least what I think that's when it was sent, he did send a message saying, PVZ is fucking impossible XD. So we'll see if he still <laughs> believes that after match number two. Well, we, did, we didn't get that much typing, though, honestly. Like, I thought there'd no. be more typing. I especially I thought there'd thought... be some typing after his dude got stuck. Yes, I know, I'd be typing. Absolutely. I always type when some dumb shit like that happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, But, I mean, he's been in a game where he's had five Legionnaires stuck. And there was no typing from that either. So maybe it's just, like, part and parcel. Oh, well, yeah, could be. Absolutely could be. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, man, that, that's not the good start. But Hapsaya has said, I remember, I always think back to this. Like, we thought he was tilting out versus uh, I Sarcasm in the gauntlet yeah. to qualify into the tournament. And instead, uh, he was actually no. saying, like, after he was down 0-2, he said, no, uh, you know, time for the reverse sweep, you know. So it's it's yep. it's interesting, right? He has that mentality. I think he can, he can come back into a set. Uh, he obviously... He's learned his lesson from that first game in the pylon placement. Yes, I did notice that. So, yeah, we'll see what ends up happening here. Now, this is Chandler about... Chandler didn't end up exploiting it as well mm -hmm. as he could have. Like, he yeah. lost a lot of momentum trying to take the workers when, again, he could just gone around the back and gone for the pylon. But it's, uh, you know, it didn't really change a lot in the grand scheme. It was just, you know, that that placement was kind of risky, notwithstanding the fact that units can happily get trapped behind the resources there. And... You know, if you're, like, really hyper stuck on trying to not get... I mean, he's going to stick the gateway. I mean, that's, that's not too bad, but it's like... He had one Draken and it wasn't even able to join the fight because it was all the way over there somewhere, so yeah. it wasn't even going to get auto-aggro. Oh, Veet has ty taken games off of me. Some typing has occurred. You will, too. <laughs> well, we'll see if that's true. Shambler... <laughs> I'm taking games out of you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the psychological warfare is beginning. Uh, I did want to point out, as, uh, of course, Shambler is in the bottom left, Upsaya in the top a right, a little bit of tickling. Tickle. If we look to the middle of the map, I would expect that a worker will make it over here. But, of course, mm. I think instead Shambler, yep, it, it, Shambler's here. He's arrived on the map. I think Shambler is really too keen on the gas at the moment. He will. Uh, he might go for that when he, uh, you know, if, like the early game kind of folds and he just wants to go for his tier two, then... Absolutely, that's a great way to get it. Uh, I don't know if Hapsai will be uh, really actually too keen on scouting that, because I don't think too many people have really done that against him. Yeah, I don't know how often it's been done against him. He hasn't really played against Zerg that many times, which is one of the reasons why it's great to uh, invite your friends, right? If you know yep. high-quality RTS pa practice partners from StarCraft II, and you're like, oh, man, if I get that guy in, he can play Zerg, and then I can practice... And then he just explodes you every game. Well, maybe the practice isn't that useful, <laughs> but at least, at least there's some practice, right? It hardened him. Yeah. So yeah, he's definitely got way better, way better SimCity going on yeah. here. He's pretty well insulated. His dragon and can chill out there. He went dragon in first instead of the zealot. So yeah, there are no Naths this time. But if there were, then he would be well capable of dealing with that. And Chamberlain we even had a uh, they took a number of units here, but otherwise. Yeah. He has a very, very, like, he never really diverges his build order that much. The Nats are really the only fork from that, and that's something that Zerg have been doing actually several ascensions now is the first Nats when they really want to scout. Yeah. Especially if it's a four spawn. 
And it makes sense, Otherwise, too, because he scattered his opponent simple. last, and he knew that that was a potential possibility. And he ends up getting a lot of worker kills out of it because it was a zealot first. And I think that's also down to the fact that Hepsea now two games in a row has gone for two gate as the opener. So yeah. he's definitely committed to trying to make this work versus Zerg. And that maybe that is also downstream of the practice with Anansi that we were alluding to earlier that seemed to be mm -hmm. very six pooly. So I don't know though. I think this is going to be an exact. If he moves out, this yeah. is going to be a repeat of last time because uh, Shambler is just going to spam Zaths and Gateway just doesn't do very well against Zaths unless you have a lot of Ecclesiasts and you can bunch all your units up. But if you move out, you lose that because they yeah. can just choose not to engage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he does have the four Dracodons and the uh, couple... Uh, well, it looks like it's just one Zealot now, but he's adding more to the field. He does have an Ecclesiast queued out of that backwards... The, the backline gateway there. And now he's going to see if he can take control of the ramp and at least get some initial shots down. Remember, there's no Warden this time around, so nothing for him to really fall back to other than the SimCity and, of course, the Scribes. Oh, the Scribes fucked. Well, it might be. Yeah, indeed. It's actually going to draw the initial fire, and it's staying alive a lot longer than Chambler would like. So he ends up losing two Vorbs. That's half of the Vorbs that he had. I think at this point, it's, he's uh, got too few units over here. Yep. And he... It was oh, the fact that he basically quite. traded the uh, Scribe for that. Yeah. Chambler did. Is that him going for the Scribe? Let the Dracodons just... Gain Absolutely. cliff advantage and just keep shooting him. So you're just going to see more Zest come out, which Chandler is probably pretty comfortable doing right now since he has the expansion and is building some defenses. But uh, Oh, Shambler. Generally oh, not a good idea for him. <laughs> he's sitting in front of him and just taunting him for a moment. Yeah. There. Yeah, this is going to force out a couple Hipsaya of circuits. I still really wants so. to move out quite yet. Yeah. Yeah. But once he gets... Uh, he's got an, an Ecclesiast, but... Uh, oh, Berserk there's eight Vorbs on so the way. So many Vorbs yeah. that... You'd rather him make those and then just let him waste it by yeah. not being able to do anything with them. Yeah. And then just secure your base. And then uh, particularly when, you know, it's a time for like the third, you can just move out and then just squash him. He does actually secure the middle just to make sure that there's no clandestine yeah. gas mining. So that's good that for pathing. him. That pathing, though. Yeah, it's a tight ramp. Blizzard moment. There's actually some idea that I won't make any promises, obviously, but Veek did say that he wanted to try to investigate adding path smoothing, which is almost like a post-processing step to the pathfinding. So we might see something like that happening. Now, look at this. Hapsaya actually learned a little bit there, moved just one zealot forward. Now can try to maybe bunch up his Dracodon so that he can defend versus this onslaught, but I think it's still going to be much too much. The question is how effective can the trade be? How many units can he kill so that he doesn't have to worry about as much of a committal? But he spread a lot of his yeah, damage yeah, out there, and it didn't really end up getting that many frags at the end of the day. A lot lot more cost efficient for Shambler. And now at the same time, he did force out a lot of units. So he's going to look to see if he can, you know, extend some of this lead, use the, the units that he's got. An embassy on the way for Hapsaya. I don't know that he's respecting the amount of power that Shambler actually has, but at the very least, he's yeah. got the low ground base to sort of jockey around and use. It's just that there's still so many Vorbs. If there were no Vorbs here, I would ha feel a lot better about his chances. But at this point, he's got to pull some of the Scribes out, see if he can get this uh, in action. The Zealot's going to charge forward, just instantly get surrounded. And I think the Wardens are going to go down. Maybe, yeah, one of them goes down without being canceled. The other one as well. That's That was kind of like the condition of holding this natural, is mm -hmm. if he can do that. You know, I'm kind of surprised he didn't actually go Lattice. <laughs> I, I, that's just going to tilt him, dude. I mean, he did have more workers for a time thanks to the nap, but... Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, now, this is actually an inverse of what happened with Hamster. Is that, he, you know, the Shambler ends up going for a pretty... Uh, I guess, like... Ha because in that series against Hamster, Hapsaya went up 2-0 early, and then Hamster mm -hmm. brought it back. Now, <laughs> Hapsaya has to do the opposite. He has to yeah. actually do the reverse sweep for real. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I think he's realizing, okay, these are what this is what Zerg can do. This is what what uh, was like that. Well, he had he had a totally different opening before. Yeah, where he was going lattice into idols, and that was effective. And golems are effective, and golems have splash, and idols have splash. Yeah. It's not a lot of splash. I mean, idols won't even hit workers mining or uh, repairing a sentinel. I think I was watching them there doing like. Every now and then, they would do, like, two damage. Yes. Yeah. But Zeths are smaller, so it'll do something. And they're a little bit more mobile, and they're not as big, so it's a little bit harder to surround them. Like, Dracodons, in general, just don't work against Quas yeah. because they're too expensive, and it takes too long to get enough of them. Yeah. If you can get a height advantage on them, 
Yes. Then they can do well, but you could do the same just with, like, Sims or Manifolds or something like that. Of course, it's more expensive and so on, but he's not getting six pulled in these matches. He's just hitting that aggression after the second base comes up, and then, you know, and, some yeah. next zats. But the problem, really just the big problem with that match is, is the move out. <clears throat> Again, yep. you know, he got hit with the move out and lost all of his units, and then Chandler just counterattacked, and that was it. Because Zats can cross the map extremely fast, mm. and... Like, if I was to say if there was a balance problem going on, it's mostly due to that, that they can cross so quickly, because it kind of, it makes it, like, you had to get ling speed for that before, so the map just isn't really as big of a deal for them. But there are ways you can avoid dying to that in particular, which is not losing your army early on and just accepting, well, I went this particular build, and mm. it's not working out, so maybe yeah. I shouldn't move out at this point and just defend and then get... You know, better tools for dealing with this. And then, d again, deny the third or something like that when the Zerg wants to switch to gas because... Yeah, that whole time there was repeating. not a single point of gas mine. That was actually a gasless victory from Shambler. And that kind of goes yeah. to show you, like, normally when somebody says, oh, I won without mining gas, it's like kind of like, a, oh, my God, he's he just, like, he's up against a noob or something, <laughs> or there was something went no, horribly no. wrong. Uh, so I think it's just that's, like, the level of strategic misread going on here. But Hapsaya is now down 0-2, facing... The lower bracket if he loses this very match he picks victory square a four spawn map so we're back on tournament soil where at this point right like shambler is gonna have to do that scout we might actually see the same sort of thing out of him he is in the top right i in the bottom right so it's vertical spawns if this gets scouted at some point right that's a situation where okay the nats can come out but we'll see if that's the same build but most crucially we'll see if hapsaya is going to pivot away from two gate yeah I think this is a little bit easier map to defend against that when he wants to expand. And, like, the ramps are kind of wide, but he can stick, like, Drakadens or whatever on that second ramp there and just hold it and hold his expansion. If he chooses to be more defensive early on anyways. Which he was in the earlier matches. Yeah. And that really helped him a lot was the kind of, like, Shutting down the Zerg's bases when they try to expand out, going back in. Yes. And then only engaging when you had, like, absolute real confidence of victory. It was very, very methodical and extremely effective. That's what you have to do against Chandler. You cannot give the fights that he wants. And he, he oh, really will want that early fight every single yeah. time he always goes for it. It's just like Noblime, really, with the bio. He always goes for that early engage. Even if it's not very all-in. Oh, a little bit of a slap on the ass there. Well, he's going to scout the lattice, so the scouts yep. are going to go the right direction both ways. No gas harvested for Shambler, who will be going for a hatch. He's a little bit delayed on it, but not critically, so we'll go down. But yeah, it's it, almost the, a waste of time to engage his drone here. It's not going to kill the lattice. So. No, yeah, I think he wants to... Uh, he's, he's sending out a second scout in case that the top right is not the location. Yep. He will find it is the hatch first, so there yep. won't be any extra hard aggression. This could give Shambler some troubles because vassals can come. They're going to force him to get quasis and or some sprites, yep. and that's going to delay him a little bit here. Uh, yeah. Yep, surely enough, when the first sprite is on the way. He has to, just based on the fact that the... Uh... The lattice is there. Also, I like following the scribe around. Just, you know, you want to make sure he's not uh, putting some wardens down in some secret location or whatever. But, mm. you know, we've seen that countless times. Has it worked well, the out? Josiah really. was uh, willing to proxy Veek right up front just because yeah. I mentioned that he wasn't doing that. So <laughs> he, he doesn't usually do it, but he you know you just might. He, yeah, I was watching him do that in uh, StarCraft Two, and he said, every time I cannon rush somebody... I, my my blood pressure goes in straight up into the sky or something like that. <laughs> so my heart starts pounding, something like that. So, uh, oh. yeah, he ends up losing the first vassal uh, rather needlessly uh, to that Yeah, straight. it got pulled back in and died before it even got any shields back. So. Yeah, classic move. Well, he's going to go but ahead and... It does uh, at least uh, confirm everything that's going on here, which yeah. what little bit it offers isn't that much. But Honestly, he now he has initiative. See, this is the yes. thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It changes the whole thing. This takes total initiative. So this is really important for him because in the other matches, he was playing reactionary from the very beginning. And then when he tried to take action, he couldn't. So he was that's because, technically speaking, Chandler already had the solution 
for his actions. So in a way, he was almost still playing reactionary. Mm -hmm. Whereas this here, no, Shambler has to play reactionary, which is he's going to start spamming quasis. And so long as Hipsai doesn't engage these quasis up front, maybe he can pick one or two off, or otherwise just prevent Shambler from taking an expansion and delay him as long as possible. Yeah. Then that allows him to either slowly build up an army with which to try to do something more meaningful, or take his own base. And you see Shambler here wants to take this, and you know, he can run in, tickle, regenerate, come back, tickle more. And at the very least, force Shambler to make even more as there's two idle workers in his base, so... Yeah, you can already see the effects of it, right? It's like, hey, he's, uh, he's, he's setting the pace, so... It's just little things, but it's, it's yeah. important pacing changes from the the last matches. Yeah, especially as he amasses a group of idols as well. Like, for one, this this uh, little engagement, he actually just traded one vassal, it looks mm -hmm. like, for three quasis, right? So that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good right there. And so he can actually keep the pressure up, force out more quasis. Now, actually, Nat's coming to try to contend with those. And if he can kill Second the Nats spread. before they reach a really major amount, yeah. then that's incredibly effective because they're very expensive. Absolutely. And if the match goes long, then that gas just keeps Shandler from getting to Tier 2 fast yeah. enough. So... There, this is uh, getting initiative at this point is very important. But if he gets a huge number of nests, then you can have some problems. But he's already making some idols, so yeah. he really shouldn't be in a lot of danger. But uh, yeah, I, I think he's a, he's basically in no danger of a counterattack from Shambler because Shambler would need Vorbs at this point, and he can't, in good conscience, make units that can't attack air units when there's like a horde of vassals pe heckling him. Uh, yeah. And it, it's almost worse actually for Shambler that this base completes. Because there's 10 vassals, they can clear out the quasis, and then they can heckle the uh, workers, right? So it's like, okay, great. You've made all that, all the these nats, and now you've got you've to suffer here. So it looks like the nats are going to be dispatched. There's eight versus nine yep. vassals. Another one, a tenth one does arrive. Yeah, the nats will kill them, but... At what cost, right? Hapsai can uh, choose not to engage here, or he could try to trade, which... A little bit of movement there. Yeah, doing the, the he's kiting he's backwards. He's done a fair bit of damage to the Nats, yeah. actually. And now they can't yeah, engage. That was, a, that was a good trade for him, actually. He lost, what, like one or two vassals yeah. and killed two Nats out of it, plus a quasi. So now Shambler has to be like, oh, I got to build even more units Yeah, now. I yeah. just want to make Masons. Yeah, exactly. Well, you can't because... Because you're not turning. This early aggression actually is quite dangerous, and it really comes down now to his Nath usage. And uh, how well Hubsai is able to keep these uh, idols alive. Well, I think there's really no and danger of him them. losing to just six quasis, right? So the Nats are actually going to leave the building, but they are going to have to be recalled for the defense. I feel like this actually has kill pressure, believe it or not, since there's no anti-surface yeah, defense. And we don't have any Zets on the way, which are really the tools you want to use versus the Idols. If you're going to use anything out of the quasi pool, anyway. Double spray here to ward off the Vassals, but the Idols are actually going to oh, be the really big Shambler. threat. Look at that damage. Mm. There's so many so Nats much just went death. down. And remember, each pair of Nats is 50 gas. Gas, which he does not have in, in high quantity, considering Sprites are uh, not able to attack down, obviously. So A little bit of tickling here, a little bit of Vassal death, but not a crazy amount. He's not turning that into a circuit, but that's just going to get popped by the Vassal combined arms here. He's now he's not rallying additional units out. He's he's got a lot. He's got three lattice production, but he's uh, not actually sent them up because you know there's no F2 key. So, oh uh, yeah, wisely pulling his uh, idols back, just allowing the vassals to do their thing. Yeah. He kills all those Nats too. Even if Hubsai loses this army without killing another unit at this point, it is well paid for itself. Oh yeah. Really set Shambler behind in the military. Look at Shambler's float too. He really wants to get that tier two, but. Now he's starting to lose this expansion. Now he has to just sit back and just spam quasis for a while. And yeah. that may not be enough to save this because... Yeah, more six more vassals, vassals just showed arrived. up. 14 in total. This hatch is going to be completely open and shut case. There's no circuits. And that's really the the pain point here is that there's no circuits. Yeah. There's no hydrith. There's no uh, additional tech. And I think Shambler is going to pay for that. It's not he like really he can hold out. Too, but, Even if uh, he gets up to that gas count, it's not like he can hold out and enough to actuate it, right? He just doesn't have the income and he doesn't have the ability uh, to, like, the the padding so that the vassals and idols and et cetera don't uh, rip his face off. Well, uh, we're reaching larger numbers of vassals because more are coming. And once there's enough vassals, yeah. they're, they're going to easily trade with the quasis just because they're focused damage. Shambler really wants to get his tier two, but uh, this could end before he has it. 
Yeah, I think he's gonna get it down, but again, at, at, one, <laughs> at what cost? He's caught typing in the middle of his... A little bit there. He does have tier one splash. It's called the Skithrakor. It would help him out massively here, but he thinks Hydrath then is a noob trap. Who's the noob now? Question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I like it. I like it. I love the typing. Honestly, like, because this would be really good against this because Vassals can't kill him. And he doesn't want to march. The saddle's into there. No, he doesn't. The circuits are here. They're going to do a lot, a lot of damage. And the quasi spread was in a nice line there, so it minimized the idle splash. So yep. Shambler is actually holding out a little bit here, but now the Vassals, even though there's only only 16 of them, they can just walk up here and step on this Hatcheros base. Mm -hmm. Now, the Iral Iris is on the way. We'll see if Shambler can possibly hold out versus this, but... He's already lost about well, five all the idols walked off, so. Yeah. Okay. He won't be able to force this down, but he can tickle a quasi before he goes. Yeah. And he also confirmed no uh, no workers there, right? So that's another yep. big deal. Now, Shambler is still Double Stargate. We love to see that. We've got up to uh, third Nexus on the way here for Hapsea, who has obviously climbed ahead in terms of worker count. And again, these idols are just right next to Shambler. Dude, just, just step on them. <laughs> well, Chandler is gonna probably well his tier two he probably has to go for like back to lists or possibly matra left and convalisks would be good too yeah convalisks would if be super good if he goes for game, error yeah. then he's already kind of working uphill it's actually going to be an exemplar first out of the Stargate, though. So, you know, it's not going to deal anything to air. And I think... I wouldn't be surprised if it's a Kalkir Pond so that he can get Kalkir. It is my travel nest. Oh, okay. Interesting. I think Convalisks would be great. Because the, the Naths will spawn. Or the uh, the Vassals will spawn. The Rural Rural Cores, And yeah. then that will attack the ground units. So. Yep. And normally you want to keep them on top of each other anyway. Such that you can actually reliably uh, enchant your army, your ground army for movement speed, right? So <laughs> it's actually going to work against your positioning there. It's a pretty pretty good counter in that sense. I mean, it was not scouted either by Hepsiah, but he does have his 17 vassals over here. He's reinforcing four at a time. Or three at a time, it looks like. He just happened to have a fourth. A first exemplar All is out. All the spear are morphing now. Oh, that's going to be a key, key detail. Oh, the workers. Oh, no. Yeah, the bounce attacks are, are in, though. Well, one of them does go down, but, you know, again, it just turns back into a regular sprint anyway. So he's not going to have the guts. At least he sees the Matrevel, so there is that. But I think he would have had a lot more efficacy out of that raid if he had just picked off a bunch of workers. Yeah, I just shift-click through all the workers and trade your vassals for, like, 20-something workers. Yeah. I mean, as it stands, he killed maybe five, six or so, and obviously that is going to set Shambler behind a little bit. Surely, some of these there units... There is Convalisks coming. It uh, is uh, as for Todd. Oh, no. He still hasn't found Shambler. Oh, he found him. It's dead. Annihilated. You know, every every single game that Shambler has died so far, Shambler won. Because he won both mm. of the games that came before this. this that's it. He avenges himself. Self-cessed inversion. Now, we are actually going to see some... Six, some six queuing going on from... Uh, yeah, Gladius is actually really good in this particular case against the Zerg because so much of their army is short range. Yeah. But uh, he could go for another Stargate at this point and cube slightly less. He could. But first, he has to take this base at 6 o'clock when he remembers that it yeah. exists. Yeah, he's been doing pretty well, though. Like, you can see the, the, the macro overall. Like, at this point, there's a lot more things to focus on. And the uh, UI isn't as functional as he might uh, be familiar with in terms Conless of the things here can be singled out by the vassals. And, and the exemplar that for really that matter. Hurt. Oh, it begins. It does begin. All right, the Rilla really Rokors are going to start spawning, and they will block the shots from the idols, but there's some splash there, and the exemplars can just focus down the convalisks. Not really a whole lot that can be done for the damage, but they're staying alive for now. Again, the exemplars, only one of them has actually lost shields. Make that two now, but th these are not going down quick, right? The armor pen is not really there for this army. However, the entire ground force has been subsumed by <laughs> Rillorocors. And with. He's murdering the Rillorocors. He is. He's killing Fuck them. those losers. They only live a few seconds. You don't need to kill Shambler's sons. 
This is unnecessary. Well, they could, the Matrilos could have been, uh, kept them Now alive, there are so, 30,000 yeah. Naths coming. All of Chandler's resources went into Naths. Here they come. Hmm. <laughs> this is horrible. This is no bueno. They're slowly tickling. Wow, they, I actually thought they were going to instantly bite the army. No, there's no armor fence. <laughs> <laughs> they're taking a stupid. their sweet time. All right, one of them goes down. Oh god, the balls. Ah, 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 ah. Well, Ooh. now what's Chandler ah. gonna do? He can't make him into uh, calculisks yet, so he's gonna make a spire instead. The Solarian is on the way, so mm -hmm. there is gonna be a call out here. You don't have armor pen. You can't kill anything with armor. I don't know. I think I would rather Empyreans at this point, but. The Slarian will destroy all the structures very quickly if it can get close to them. There's <laughs> so many Spiritists, though. They have four armor. Yeah, there's going to be well, more coming no, as well. They're going for his six o'clock. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be under fire soon. Now the the Nexus will probably just end up getting canceled here. He is actually actively looking at it, so he cancels one of the wardens, loses the scribe. That. These don't do enough damage to kill the building very quickly, and if he loses them, that'd be a lot worse. So. Yeah, it gets zoned not away. Not a super big deal at the moment. Just Nexus kind of is a little bit zone. higher HP than I thought, so it's uh, yeah, it's not a valid target in that situation. Uh, at the very least, he uh, stops additional defenses from being warped in without sending another pylon over there. Sending another scribe over there, rather. Now, we don't see any gas capping yet from either player. So many convalisks. I mean, they're good against what Hapsaya had before. Yeah. But they don't spawn Era Rilla Rorkers anymore, sadly. And that would be absolutely disgusting if they did because of all the vassals, but they don't. So, Shamler's army is actually going to kind of melt as it is. He needs to have some real meat to deal with this. He's making Protathalors. Again, very anti-surface units here. Like, Hapsaya has everything he needs to deal with this. Yeah, I would say so. It's pretty inarguable with all of the Gladiuses that has, have been uh, added now. Then you, you factor in the Solaria and the Tiding and all that. And that's the obvious primary target for everything that Shambler has, right? And then you think mm -hmm. about all the Gladius bounces that are going to stack up during that time. But here comes the Convalisks. Oh, no. uh, again, they're going to spawn a lot of really row cores and not really much else. Gladius shots are going to hit. These Nathacores are indeed falling apart. And that was a lot. That was 14 Naths just instantly evaporated, essentially, over the span of about yep. five seconds, right? So, And uh, the Protoss is up in bases at this point. Now, there were some Gosvalets made so that they could add a couple of bases here and there. Uh, but it's going to be some time. finally making the Hydrath Den. He has become a noob. Ah, noob. Noob, noob alert. Noobler. He does have a couple of mutas here, but I still think... Yeah, I, I, when he sees the heavy air, he thinks, oh, I should make that noob structure so I can get Vithralisks eventually to reduce the armor, of course. That would actually resolve a lot of his woes, but I feel like it's going to hit too late, especially if... There are eight Gladius. Yeah. They're not amazing against Terran or Protoss, but they are amazing against very short-range Zerg that already have a hard time cutting through all the armor in any fast amount of period. Yeah. And especially against... Lots and lots of static structures surrounded by workers. Yes. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Well, he's aware of the uh, potential for the mutas to dive in, but I think he might be giving them a little bit too much respect right about now. Gladiuses are going to use the Rilla Rokors to warm up the Binding Plasma. That's obviously just going to zone away the mutas then. Can't really he's take scared that, of the Rilla Rokors. Why are there so many of them, he wonders. Hmm. Interesting. Absai is intimidated by the small, bitey things. Well, you know, he did ask Hamster what made those when he lost to him on Impetus, so that was some mm -hmm. time ago. But uh, Hamster did oblige with the name. I feel like that Hapsai could just, like, aim move into Shambler's base and kill him at the moment. Yeah. He doesn't realize it yet, but he is massive. He would have to worry about diving into the uh, sprites, but once the balls start bouncing, they will just kill everything. Yeah. Shambler scouting with the bulk of his mutas here, about to fly straight into the meat grinder. Yeah, a bunch of mutas just go down. There's more that are there, but they're going to actually path around, see if they can uh, yeah. hit this base that's being set up. But there's an engram that's going to be finished right, before then, yeah. so they're not going to be able to accomplish too much. much. Not by themselves. If, if these were Almaxilisks instead, which is obviously a little bit pricier, uh, that I'd give them a better shot because they have a lot more armor pen. But they've uh, not really been the favorite for Shambler. 
Sh Chandler is uh, maybe wishing he had some Tagralis. Yeah, this something. Right about now. He made for Tathalors, but okay, those range. can't attack up. Sky Toss reigning yeah. supreme right about now. The Spear Tits are helping, but there's only so many of them. Yeah, some of his forces are getting a little split up. The Gladiuses are quite fragile, so they can die to those. Yeah, a couple of them have already died. Looks like there's but uh, Chambler still, still has still uh, 11 military units and dropping. Yeah, there's still so many Gladiuses, right? You look at it and it's like, dude, there's we've got 10 of them still up. Yeah, that's going to be 9 very shortly, but still. That's just a deadly amount. What can be done to compete against that? He's desperately massing around the Nidus with his uh, m amount of the workers. The Mithilisks have arrived at long last. Eh. Fuck those stewards. And, Fuck those vassals. And there's ah, nothing over. for them to help. Look, I love the exemplars, like, hugging them. <laughs> yeah, may as well. Oh, uh, here come the Mutas that were sent on the attack to the bottom left. They were recalled. And Shambler just quits without The replay GG. has finished. The replay <laughs> has finished. Well, you know what that means, boys. is on the board. We will see Sideshow selected next. Shamblar thought he was going to commit to ground after that, but he didn't. And uh, I feel like that the uh, Shambler Droleth did not catch the presence of the Exemplar when it got squished on. Even though they shot at it, Shambler may not have been looking there at mm, that moment, yeah. which would have been some key information, because uh, I do not believe he would have made Protathalors if he realized that the Protoss was building Stargate. Yeah, it's like super heavy air, right? It was just Vassal. It was, you know, Argosy with Solarians, which I, I, I agree with your estimation. I think Empyreans probably would have won harder. Uh, especially considering they would have brought the splash there that wasn't reliant on the Gladius bounces. Yeah. But he had yeah, so he many Gladius it didn't matter. Two of them coming up, but yeah, yeah, it didn't really matter too much at that point. The Solarian's just kind of like your tank. In that first fight with all the convalisks and shit, it only lost its shield. So, well, it was ju just a beef beef wall. It was beef nugget. Hubsai cooking up a stew here. Yeah, Hapsaya does a lot of cooking, actually. Uh, occasionally, I'm sure he do, will do cooking streams. We'll see what he's cooking up on Sideshow. Oh, I was going to say, is, is he cooking up in... Uh, oh, look at this. They're both piss-colored. Enjoy that. Enjoy that, mm -hmm. boys. Now, on this particular match, Shambler facing off against Hapsaya. Shambler in the top left, Hapsaya in the bottom right. Man, I am pretty sure that uh, this series could go the distance. I mean, I know Sideshow is a map that Chambler said he thinks is going to be like his his new Bosca vine. He thinks he'll never drop a map on this. <laughs> well, it's one hell of a time to test that. Well, the, the second game, well, I think it's like all the games I watched so far of them were on this match, ah, uh, yes. map. So yeah, including some very long ones that uh, Chambler needed tier three to defeat uh, Hubsai when he was most certainly not in form. Hmm. And I believe that the match I need to watch still that also I think is very long is also uh, on this map. Yes, it So is. that will be a map that both of them are definitely familiar with in this matchup and with each other on. Mm -hmm. But Hapsaya is going to go gateway first this time. So, and uh, Chandler is going quas first. So <laughs> we're going more into the first two games here. So... I'm sure Hupsai has his reasons for going gate first on this map, but... Uh, I mean, you can do a wall on this spawn. We saw Isarchasm do that versus Veek, but... Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure about the high ground. Tickle, tickle. And the tickling could happen. Sean Blur is uh, getting tickled here. Yeah. Hupsai does have a tickle fetish, wants to get in those armpits. Wiggle, wiggle, tickle, oh, tickle. Oh, no! <laughs> they tickled back, and it was like a vomit yeah. tickle instead of a... Yeah, actual... Shambler, like, had a spur go. You know, some people just, like, touch them, and they just start screaming. It's like if they touch grass or they end up in a place of low population density, they just start crying uncontrollably. That's kind of like Shambler when you start tickling him as he's... <laughs> I mean, I think mission accomplished, right? He's... Uh... Yeah. For some silly so, reactions. Zealot first uh, against Naths, unfortunately. Don't worry, there's a lattice coming. I want this. Yeah, I want well. the Zealot to move across the map, though, because if you know, if you know that there's Naths, and he will know because he's watching, right? Like he just saw. Yeah. Okay, there's Naths. He should send the Zealot across the map. What can you do? It's not like you got ground units with this. Yeah. Oh, Dragon ends in route. The uh, Zealot is checking the expansion. That's not where Shambler always puts himself. He's right here. In the choke. Yeah, Shambler is uh, in a special place, but you know what? He's, uh, he's got your he's got your mind. He's just heading across the map. At the very least, it'll slow down any Zeth follow up, but there are no follow ups at the moment. 
And the gnats are kind of taking their time to get over here. It wasn't like a straight path. Yeah. So the Draconin will pop out. Out oh, there's a the full worker pull. I don't think it's really necessary. You can't exactly get away from them. No, but you know, that's fine. Only I one guess. Kill, though, so. But again, it look. Is, <laughs> throughout all of this, right? The Zealot has arrived. It will deny the expo. Yeah. Shambler did not clock that Zealot, even though I walked right past Shambler. Yeah. Shambler was not so, paying attention to what Shambler saw. Yeah, it's a one-for-one one worker trade. So that's going to force out something here. He might even lose another worker at the moment. Yeah, he's only now started Zeth, so he will actually be losing at least one worker to this situation. He's, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He needs to, is in the ball pit. It's full of vomit. Yeah, he needs to so, let okay, those shields escaped. regen. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, here comes the drill. Uh, mm. no, no. Oh, he still gets uh, one! Uh. And he obviously recalled uh. the Nats all the way home, so no longer has to fear yep. about that. Now, what was happening it behind pretty that? Pretty good. Pretty good for Shambler there. Now, it's an idol coming with an additional Zealot. Mm. So, he'll be equipped to deal with the very large number of Vorvacores. Actually, it's pretty much all Vorvacores at the moment. It's probably like six Vorvacore plus two Nats. It's definitely going to be a little scary here. It will be, but I think at this point with delaying the expansion for so damn long and Hapsaya about to take his own, I think he's okay. Like, he should be able to... I mean, to the all-in could kill him here. If he can repel it, then he'll be okay, but there is a lot of shit coming his way. Yeah, the idol uh, is the main thing that makes me think he's fine, but it could theoretically be surrounded. It's Yeah, he, he can definitely get surrounded. Like, if the Zerg gets the initiative on him, if he can't hold the ramp, which right now he's not even sitting at it... Mm -hmm. Then they can just dive the idol and kill it, and everything else will die pretty much immediately after through the Vorov. So, this has been the loose conditions for Hapsa up to this point is this particular timing right here. Well, the second idol is here, and that's a pretty big game changer because you can no longer just surround one target or debuff one target. Now, the Nats did stay alive, so they can be a part of this, but it looks like right now they're just going to be on a patrol path scouting out any air units or the like. Dude, Shambler, you can unburrow. There's other people to relieve no, you. No, no, no. He can't unburrow. Dude, he's he's grilling. That's true. Cooking stuff up. Next is going to be coming under attack here. It's about halfway done, but here come the idols in response. Nats could go in for a worker harassment. It looks like they're going to be brought up There's instead. There's an attempted surround. Yeah, yeah both of the idols but getting But he's debuffed. getting a little caught up there on the zealot, yeah. so he didn't even attack for a while. And the Nats haven't contributed to this fight at all. I think uh, Shambler kind of tunnel visioning in, so he's ended yep. up losing most of his ability to surround or do anything. There's only the one Vorvacor left. Shield's not even broken on this Nexus yet. And the Vorv will also be killed, so... Yep. The Ecclesiast popped up. Shambler wanted to go in there, but he saw that there was an Ecclesiast in there. He realized, nope, he's going to out-sustain me, so he pulls back, and that worked out pretty well for Hapsaya. The fact that he had the Nexus there was like a bait almost. Yeah. Because the Zerg got focused on there and split their attention. Okay, it looks like there was a pause, but no good. Okay. No uh, no worries there. Yeah, Shambler said uh, he was worried about the replay breaking, as you saw in the uh, in the message. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty silly that that is still a problem. I don't even know how easy it would be to fix, but something we can look into over the break. Mm. It's probably like some buffer yeah. or something just gets blown over, and, and StarCraft is like, well, I was programmed by actual morons, so... All right, the Nath will get the complete scout off either way. A second gate coming, Lattice there. And, of course, the Nexus is up. Shambler is ahead on workers, but has chosen to try to pressure with eight more Vorvs coming alongside his 11 Zethracors. And Shambler dies. Oh, well, the Vorvs are actually oh, engaged. early engage here is actually very good for uh, Hapsai because yeah. he puts damage on them before they can reach a high mass. Yeah. Some of them are still wounded, so... Absolutely. Shambler kind of wants to push this, but he... Would have more luck if he had some Quasilus. Yeah, I mean, all they of definitely. the idols, too, are just going to splash so much, combined with the fact yeah, that you precisely. still have Zealot Ecclesiast up. So, like, the front line is going to take longer to chew through, especially without the Quasis. And then you can't even get onto the idols, right? So, still moving out, Oop. actually drawing him in there. Obviously, his units weren't going to be on hold position. So, he's going to try to go for the back this line. But it's not going to be as effective. Yeah, he doesn't There's have no any hordes left. follow up on the back line. Yeah. yeah, so a couple Zealots go down, and that's actually the only casualties. Well, I say that, and Ecclesiast does eventually die. And yeah, that's why I'll be pretty nice, pretty happy about that because th this is like the worst part of the match for him is this this yeah. early exchange, but now he's got it very stable, no really concerns at all. The worker difference isn't going to be too big of an issue for him because he just killed so many military. But very critically, is that Shambler's taking this third, and we can see some zealots are moving over there towards Shambler's Nat, where they're going to face Shambler's Farmville side game that he likes to play every now and then. 
he likes to pause the game and start up Farmville. You can see it manifesting over there. But more importantly, as they find that third, and they're going to yeah. step on it, which is very important because if that got underway, then uh, it could be a problem. He may not be able to actually finish it off because there's so many it's morphing over there, but it'll give him some idea of his game plan from this point. Oh, it's forcing more Chandler, pressure course, out. Going for tier two. The workers are actually come have become equal, and the additional pressure of zealots and etc. And th just the fact that the game has gone on the, in the state that it has means that Shambler isn't actually making a lot of workers. He's just queued up eight more, trying to saturate this space. Yeah, he's rushing to tier two at the moment. It just yeah. started. Yep, there we go. So this is going to give some time. There is an ardent authority coming for Hupsea. So mm -hmm. if he ends up adding a, an embassy, we know he's probably going to go for the Akanto drop if he sticks it with it just as it is. And it looks like he's, he wants to take three o'clock instead of taking the more conventional seven and a half. No defenses at the ramp, and the there Zeth flank is potentially here, yeah. there. Yeah, so it could be a run by, or it could be a flank to just try to kill the army. He will he's try a flank, but the army is well ahead of where he really wanted it to be. Yeah. So he pulls back, and he could go for the base, but he decides not to. That, that's a critical moment, right? Shambler could have just run in with all those Zeths and forced yep. this army back. Kills all the or tempo. At least he could have killed the golem and everything, yeah. right? Right. So now Shambler has begun the other Farmville game that he plays, yes. I believe. HK said it was called Harvest Moon. That's basically just Farmville. It's a Har Farmville spinoff. So that's what he's doing. He's spinning off over here with 30,000 circuits. A man after my own heart. This is how I play Zerg. I feel like I've taught Shambler this. Yeah. I'm a very proud father. Well, the idol face tanking a couple of the circuits. That sounds uh, seems unintentional, but I think it'll end up working out okay. There's only one Ecclesius with this army, and it's going to die to the circuits. So... Now the engagement can come in here, and there's not really that as much sustain. The golem's doing work, though, throughout this entire yep. fight, splashing Just and keeping tanking. everything else alive. That's actually a, a new form of sustain for the Protoss army right now. And I think maybe he can burst down these extra circuits. Yep. He's getting it down. He has to get him down before the reinforcements come. Yeah. He doesn't want to be tanking them both up as Shambler starts to spend some of that money. Tier 2 will be finished for him. So he's getting some ticklers. Uh, he didn't kill that They're top Kagrin. So if they, that is going to remorph and get a lot of HP back as a result of that. Yeah, Ticklers are marching in here and dying, so it's just a trade at the moment. Yeah, we like to see the trade on the military, because you, if you can't kill the static defense, then there's not really a point in, in attacking it or doing damage to it. And, well, Hapsaya is just going to charge on in anyway. Well, at least he didn't die. He's got a couple more Zealots and Golems on the way, so he could theoretically there continue the pressure. Cantor. Yes, there is. Iquera there is has an extra Akantor. Iquera has begun his holy crusade, his march across the map. Hmm. He move commands into the circus, just be absolutely sure. He sees the whites of its eyes as he steps on it. Well, more Kagrants are here, but there's not as much splash as we would really like to see. If the Akantors were with this army, it would be a different story. But the Zealots streaming on in, and the Akantor um, squirming on in. Uh, he's uh, yeah. about halfway across the map right now. No, uh, Shambler chases this. He could just walk face first and die. Quarren die terribly. I like how this but whole side, right? Like, the right side of the map is being used as the avenue. Nobody's even bothered to check the left side. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a base of a worker over there. Hapsai has, like, 1,500 minerals. It's, like, too much murder going on. There is an architect coming next. They're a little bit faster. Hapsai might be saving up to the Monument of Sin. He's got a lot of minerals, yeah, but not not the Vespian for it just yet. Yeah, just now establishing his 3 o'clock base. He's adding an Engram of Warden, not harvesting Vespian from it. No caps, of course, for either player right now. Well, Iquire is going to take up a defensive position on this ramp here as he squirms and wiggles and creates a horrendous traffic jam. Well, the Scribe's also not using the... Uh, like they're, they're just following a rally, right? So they're not... Yep. They're not helping in this situation. Size units really just embracing the Tism Storm at the moment. I guess 9 o'clock was completely forgotten about by Shambler because he put the worker down there, but he didn't actually task it to build yep. anything. He is taking 12 o'clock instead, and kind of the worst base to take versus uh, Arden Authority Protoss because their range will just allow you to attack the minerals, the mineral harvesters. So yep. if that ever gets online, let's just say it'll be very easy to pressure. We do have a Nidus out. Well, Mm, Shambler is making some transports. Is he going to do a Hurakan drop? I think so. But on Iquare. I think it's going to be a... Yeah, you can do it with Vorbercorus. They're basically Achmed, just more dog-like. I don't know. I'm the players are expanding next to each other, and neither are aware of it. Yeah, that's all right. 
Got some units watching around as 9 o'clock is finally being taken. But yeah, the Acantors, the Architects, the Zealots. There's a very meaty front line here for the oh, Siege. He's going to transport the circus. I really was wishing it was going to be a, uh, a drop of Vorbercores. Oh, he's just trying to take control of the left ramp. side ramp right now. But the Architects are going to start sounding off. The Protathlors are here, but not in a number that can contest the Architects, despite their cliff advantage. And the Acantor shots are going to start destroying the Quazeth units. More Protathalors have arrived, as well as a Bactylisk out of the Kafralosk. More artillery here, essentially. Yeah, this ramp is a little awkward for Hipsai at the moment. Yeah. But every single time the Bactylisk shoot, it does tickle Shambler's taint, and Ooh. funny now, they're going to continue shooting. Yeah, the Architects are doing a lot of damage right now. He didn't have any more melee to try to, like, crush the... To hold them at the ramp, essentially. Uh, and obviously, it wouldn't have helped them with all the Acantors that much anyway, right? He needed to actually transport his defenses over here, I think, uh, a little bit sooner. Uh, but he didn't really keep tabs on where the military was. So he has, no has a moment thinking, should I move into this? Yeah, he's going to go and for it. And he decides, fuck it, I'm going in. And the mutas are going to die absolutely disgustingly. Yeah, there's just too, I think there's too much concentrated two damage here, here. So their damage is going to be high. Yeah, the front line's basically dead, but he does need to bring these uh, defenses over. It's just a tier one defensive structure there from the circuit. He has some Zets coming. At best, they can serve as fodder to absorb the Acantor shots. And they do indeed succeed at that. The workers are uh, returning somewhere else. They'll draw some fire and <laughs> some focus. Ooh, three well, that actually helped Chandler out a lot yeah. by uh, drawing the Acantor shots away from his actual army. That's right. He's leapfrogging with the uh, Scortrets, and it is successful at killing health. one of the... Yeah, he could have just turned it. In 16 health, he could kill it, but... There we go. It's it's now a regular one. I Claire cares not for your and he's dead. And the MVP has died. Shambler in shambles, trying to pull it together. The big men have arrived. Yeah, they can try to sustain, but they need to take so much burst damage just to get in there and, and start the fight. Particularly with the architects being uh, hard to engage on. Acantors are dead, so now you can start flooding them with Zeths. Or even just try to close the distance with mutas or something. But These like, are all off of Capra, so there is yeah, no... there's no regression. No regression for them, and Shambler starts racing up there in Mineral Count from his other base mining. Yeah, unburrowing his workers. Top right being slowly saturated here from Hapsea. He's, He's got a got lot of units. He's got two in the background of this. They haven't done anything yet. Yeah. But he has them in case he needs them, and Aero Switch at this point would absolutely grab Shambler by the pussy. You can't do that unless you're a presidential candidate. So well, I'm he saying just for might president. be with a hairstyle like that. That's right. But he's uh, not doing anything with them at the moment. He wants to build something there. His scribe has to take some of the dumbest path imaginable. <laughs> well, he's building a crucible there, but again, nothing is actually coming out of those yet. Those are going to be very important. I mean, the sooner he gets those making stuff, the better. Some units are going to fly in here just as defenses start. Yeah, he's capped four geysers at once, so... Yeah. One engram down. Yeah. But he canceled the other one, so it saves a little bit of money. Yeah, he's going to start retaliating with his own units. He could just attack this base that's harvesting a lot of minerals from the 12 o'clock position, but I you know, didn't want to keep his position there. It felt like it was too fragile. Wanted to reinforce instead. Noah Cantor with his army. So. Ass first into this army and might be able to pick off his architect. Yeah, it's already started to aggro onto some Zethricors of all things, but they're just oh, dying. It's murdering them. Yeah. But here's the reaction. He's uh, a little faster in the trigger than Shambler was for that guard. So the three or four meters up there at the moment are really a big deal as the rest of these units are getting cut off. But Dude, so many Dracodons this whole time. Yeah. yeah, there's they're focusing on the Nexus and there's like a dozen scribes just kind of like meandering all over in that general vicinity that could have been murdered. Don't worry, the scribes are now blocking the paths of the twenty Dracodons. <laughs> I just can't win on that base. It's just too stupid. Well, it is Solarians coming again. So, again, not maybe not hyper effective against Zerg, but they're so fucking tanky. Yeah. And that's kind of what Hapsai needs at the moment is a little bit more standing power so that his siege can kind of get to work. And also a way to burst down the building. And since Chabler at the moment is mostly building Tetzorakor with the occasional Bactylisk, 
The Dactylists are going to be a huge issue for the Solarians, but if he kills all the Tathzorakors in the early engage, then they'll just kind of die to everything else he's got. Like, oh, I don't know, the five architects he has over there <laughs> in that little bunch. That's a lot of damage, and also Imperians have been queued up as well as he takes another base. Coming down here to secure that bottom left with those three Zealots as the Melisks watch on as their friends are annihilated. He's going to discover that other base, but there's a Nidus over there full of large men. Yeah. They just kind of belly dance to that tiny little hole there. Well, that's a mental image for you. How do they squeeze inside? Yeah, it's, it's big enough. They just crouch. Crab walk. I mean, they have to, like, fold themselves into a penny, like a suitcase. Shambler is finally going to take the middle of the map. Can you believe it? Oh, my God, it's happening. You saw it here first. Years after this map was first made, <laughs> someone is finally attacking the middle. And Nabon took it one time, but he said that it, he had already felt like he already won that game. That was actually a game against Three Crow, if you remember. Where Three uh, Crow yeah. held on for a very long time. Had all the of the Armada heavy... is slowly amassing, and since there are no scouts coming from Shambler to check this area, it doesn't really yeah. need to worry about it. After all, adding it's some grand libraries. Just too. It could be really bad for Shambler making so many Tetsuro cores. He's saving his gas because he's going to tier three. There it is. It's on the way. So I'm not sure entirely what Shambler will make in tier three. Maybe if he builds Toss Girls, he could think, oh, I can just burst down that army. But actually, Toss Girls are very fragile. This army is actually very well suited for killing them. So I feel like he's actually going to want, like, Alcagelus would be very good. Because uh, the Lores would be extremely good, I mean, as long as he has something to do with air, but he doesn't know he needs air at the moment. Yeah, the Mutas flew in and died to the Wardens, so the Empyreans and Salarians didn't even have to reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. Shambler is definitely oh. in the dark right now. There's even a Didact coming for Cloak. Another gas being capped right now here in the... And the Armada and is slowly amassing. Slowly, but surely. Shambler, uh, Hapsai, rather is playing this very calmly as he should be. That's right. He is ahead on worker count, and he should, however, be mindful of the middle. Yeah. Because there could be an army there that he doesn't know about, much less the fact there's a base there at the moment he doesn't know about. Yeah, the so uh, mutas are on an attack here. move here. Yeah, the workers that are transferring around are indeed. Now, is this the point? Yes, okay. Oh, Sham no. Shambler will be aware. Oh, my God, there's yeah. a lot of air units. Yeah, he saw all that. What's the reaction? Five Vithralusks instantly queued out of his Kafralusks. Uh, two Tetsorakors. is coming. So he might be going actually even for... Uh, yeah, the Zarkavacor, right? The heavy. Yeah, yeah. Zarkavacor and Ultra Chorus would not be too bad as well. A little bit of extra sustain, but he has so much melee already. He really needs to be thinking about this stupidly huge army here. I think... Uh, that is... Yeah, I know. Slowly, you know... I think uh, Hapsai is poised actually for a pincer here, and I think Shaman is going to be really hard time dealing with it because most of his existing units mm. can't actually stop this air army, mostly the Bactylists. But if he funnels through that Nidus in front of all the Empyreans, he is going to <laughs> potentially lose a chunk of them, even if he fends it off. Yeah. Hapsai's army, the ground army, the one he actually wants to fight with what he currently has, yeah. uh, may well attack him immediately after. So I, I think that this little expedition here is to fish out a response. Yep. And then he's going to go in after. Yeah, what's the reaction, right? So it looks like all of the the uh, Vithralusks and Mutas are on their way. They'll first engage the stewards. There's not enough of them, I don't think. There's there there's a number. There's five Empyreans here. Yeah. If he bundles up in front of these Empyreans. Which he is doing. Oh, the oh, recall bye. hits. Okay. That's nice what it was recall. for. He, he didn't, didn't think he could have fought that, but he was not sure about it. So he played it safe. The melee is going to run into them. Oh boy, yeah. This is not oh, where you no. want, right? Like Hapsaya has the uh, the ground yeah, hit squad. Yeah, he has to immediately pull out of there. So yeah, that, was, that recall just turned out to be like doubly effective. It prevented him from taking any potential losses, and it got him a couple of Tazorigor kills. And suddenly, all the units are in the middle of the map. Yep, and, and these are not tier two to defenses there, either. So he's in trouble because that's actually a hard area to approach with all ground, and when the enemy has so many air units on the map. Yeah, this is not looking too hot for Shambler. He's he going in, but the air army is coming in. It's not going to be good for him trying to choke down that little bridge there. Oh, his mutas are clumped up for the Empyreans. Not massively just yet because the stewards have uh, drawn the aggro instead. Nope. 
Shamblar finally gets his ground approach, but not without his melee. So oh, the boy. air army is going to pull back here. Oh, he almost yeah. loses a Solarian, but not quite. The Munas are all dead. The Vithlis are not just not enough of them to brute force that down, so he has to pull back as all of the Vaculus get melted by that mass of wall of dragons. Yeah. There's a bunch of other Vithlis over here that weren't in the fight and they're just shooting stewards at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they're killing some of them, but they're, it's not really. Oh, it's the Sovereigns. The Sovereigns have arrived. Okay, that's an interesting choice. That's a possibility. Now, look at all the bodies in the middle, you know? He's, try he's, <laughs> he's trying. He's trying to, to make more. He's got to go to the middle. There's so much dead things, but it's a little late now. Yeah, he's it is. He's murdering the quasi. He's trying to make more. He's actually trying to do the the gimmick where you you build the uh, you you kill your own units and and use them for corpses. Now I always said that this is, would cost you too much APM and focus to actually do it properly, and he maintained. No, that's not true. But well, he's starting they're to not very durable. Is the thing here, right? Yeah. So, if you can use them to snipe the Imperians, it can work. He is starting to focus them down, right? And so there's actually only three left. Two of them have already gone down. The Sovereign's hitting pretty hard right about now. This is definitely not something Hapsai has seen before, I imagine. No, this is such a, a limited number of things here. But he's moving into them. He's oh, trying to boy. grab the bodies, but there's too many Protoss still. There's oh, way too no. many Protoss still. Not only that, all of them died, and the, the, they couldn't end up getting onto the corpses in time. There's more Sovereigns in the back, though. More of them have been make, being made. Two Monuments of Sin are being started behind this. Now, crucially, 9 o'clock is still mining. So it's still contributing to the war effort. Chamberlain's got a massive mineral flow, but not very much Vespian. He really needs to start using these Sovereigns for something. There's the one Empyrean with nine frags, but there's still seven Solarians. Yeah, the Solarians are just slowly grinding him down. If he had Viths with this army, then the Sovereigns would be significantly more useful. Oh, yeah. Viths would just shred the armor and let him finally snipe him, but there's also a lot of Draconins. Like, yeah. Sovereigns only have 75 health, so even though this isn't the best army for killing them, they can't kill the Protoss. Like, yeah. Hapsaya doesn't really have to pull out of this. He can sit on top of this and maybe even kill the Zorka tribe really and whatnot. up. Nope. He says, fuck it. Hey, he's gonna I'm going to go somewhere else. He's Let's recalling to the top 12. right. Yeah, that's exactly where he's going to be going. Now, Chandler is like, I'm fine with that. Let's march across. No, no. And he's like, fuck, i got to save my base. He does have all these vets and mutas that he saved from the middle of the map, if you remember. And so that that can absolutely yeah. turn the engagement in a different direction. He can bring them together with what he's got. And he can finally put a dent in this, especially with his size army getting a little bit separated by these ramps here. He can fly in and snipe these... Yeah, there there we comes go. The engagement. Already starting to rend the armor massively. And look at all of the Sovereleth shots. They're going to do so much more damage to these Solarians without all of the armor. But here come the Architects hitting on the other side. And honestly, the Sovereleth being focused down here. Great choice by Upsaya. Yep. Now that's just, just ignores the Vithlis. Yeah, absolutely. I he mean, may not think to do that, but yeah, he doesn't want the Sovereleth multiplying again. So he's he's gotten a beat on what's going on here. Yeah. He lost a lot of Solarians in that, but he wiped out. Shambler's biggest anti-air threat at the moment. There's still four There's Solarians. many, many more Sovereigns coming, but yeah. crucially is that those Architects are still alive with 20, 38 kills apiece. They've really been keeping him in this engagement, and he's just going to recall out again. Bye. See ya. Uh, uh, go Wait, the Architects. The hole. No, no, not the no. Architects. No. I'm sorry. No. Oh, 30 died. kills. He's but don't worry. He, he recalled them to 9 o'clock and finished the job there. His Amaranth had started. So Shambler, in shambles indeed, as far as the money goes. He's thinking about what he wants to make at this point. He's made Gitora cores. Holy shit. That's the first time I've Holy ever seen shit. them. I saw those when I built them like a year ago. Sovereleths are massing are completely up, completely different now. Look at this. Top right being contested. Yep. The Engram is actually going to get outranged here by the stack because they've reached the number. Well, maybe not quite, but more than enough. He's recalling all the scribes. He's trying to. Anyway, there you go. Off they go. Bye. See ya. All right, he's saying. has got a lot of money right now. He, he <laughs> is. Well, he is a disgustingly rich man. He's building. He's, he's got two star uh, star servants here, but he's not building anymore at the moment. He's adding a crucible to this. It'll. It, it might so not many defend tickles. the engram though. Oh boy. The quasis Meanwhile. have arrived. I too make quasis when I don't know <laughs> what to do. I figure, how can you have anything wrong with quasis? Oh my Just god. Just make more of them. Wow. Endless tickles. The tickling is non-stop. The aquifers are going down in the top right. That's going to cement that base dead. But, man, the quasi's dead. Those could have been Wiggleheads. Think about it. Yep. Or at least you could have brought then the they might actually kill the stewards. Yeah. 
So he's got a lot of Zoryus. Yeah, there's a lot of Zoryus. I'm here, not sure yeah. what those are going to be for, but. Well, he doesn't have much gas in the moment. He's got more Sovereleths over here, but. Yeah, they're slowly. They're not in the best location to actually deal with this. His Sovereleths are actually going to be a little split up from each other. So he's not really going to be able to benefit. Oh, yeah, look at this. The them. Engram and Warden in the, to in the top right actually cleared out some of them because some of them were pulled away. Yeah. Well, I think he's going to prepare himself for another recall at this point because he is suffering some damage from the Sovereleths in the 6 o'clock location. Where are those Star Sovereigns? Here we go. We also have Cantavis. Yep. So, They'll probably die before they get close enough to do anything. Well, I think this. Yeah, the storms are going to be a pretty key interaction here. The engram. Ah, uh, they flew into the engram. They, they didn't get a lot of kills, ooh. but it added a lot of damage. Yeah. It's just a visible bug where it looks cloaked, but it isn't. I promise. Otherwise, it would be revealed, obviously. Well, the scribes Gambler pull away. Doing his absolute best here to spawn in some additional ones, but. I think the Sovereign of Neem has kind of gotten a little bit ahead of him. He needs so many more than what he's got. He's got to really make a tremendous mass of them. His rallies are still... Look, he's got 34 quasis. I don't know what the Gatora cores were for. Maybe that was actually a misbuy or something. Maybe. <laughs> but Shambler's starting to show some fatigue here because you see yeah. he's rebuilt number 12, but he's not harvesting from it. Oh, he's and just his walking, gas is getting annihilated and Sovereigns are dying to engrams. Yeah. And I think I think of size also showing a lot of fatigue here. He's, he's not building any more Star Sovereigns. He's got a lot of queues set up for these. He could build additional structures oh, or no. whatever, but oh. he's, uh, I think he's in a really strong spot otherwise. Yeah, unfortunately, the Sovereleths did get bopped by the Engram, and now they don't have the range to outrange the Wardens. Well, the, okay, here we go. Didact recalling in the fleet. Uh, yeah, yeah, get in there. Oh, oh. It looks like the Didact died. So only some of the nope. fleet went through. But you know that what? That be might be enough. Definitely an issue for Hafsaya. Uh, I don't know uh, if they can Chandler actually so kill many... him. Dude, he has so many quasis. <laughs> He's going to tickle him to death. See? He tickled to death all the stewards. All right. Where's There's the Cantavis spell? He, does, he did get a Cantavis in with this army. What's he thinking about doing with it? I think he doesn't know it's there. It's, it's mostly hidden. He sent the rest of his air force over to protect the 3 o'clock base. There's a Psy Storm. Yeah. I mean, that's just more Sovereign targets, really. Yeah, really. Oh, the Sarvalas are taking a lot of damage from it, actually. Yeah. They actually took quite a bit of damage from that. I mean, when they're really slow like that, if you can zone them out with a storm, oh, yeah. you can kind of funnel them where you want them to go. By the Cantavis. You know what would be great for Hapsaya if he, he actually just spent all of his money now, but what would be great for him is like three or four Enthelians. Mm. Just drop them on top of the Sarvalas and then engage. They'll probably burst a couple of them down pretty quick. But their ambient damage will bring them really low, and then he can just wipe over the rest. Of oh, them. yeah, with any splash, anything of the sort. Now, the Quasis are moving in. The uh, Sovereleths are kind of far behind. There's 30 of them with this stack. Where's the Cantavis spell? Dude, I want to see it. We need to see that. Uh, I mean, it could also get sniped here if he's not careful, right? So. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of range out of this stack, but they're super immobile. So yeah. that gives Hepsai the time to respond. He's pulling over the rest of his group. Shambler's economy is still hurting so much. He's really starting to struggle here. He's not mining gas from that expansion, and uh, he needs to like quickly drop down a extractor there and get to work on that. And then you look at the army count. Oh, no. While Shambler has the higher number, it's a lot more volatile. He needs to get some snipes in on these high-value targets like the Star Sovereigns, but he kind of focused on that Atreus instead, so he ended up losing a chunk of them there. Yeah, he's trying to Asai hit the salvos, go for this fight. But remember, this is a good trade for him. Just remember, like, there's no Vitralis, there's no armor pen. We've got. 11 Salarians, 8 Empyreans. The armor, the quality of the army here is just so much higher for Upsaya. He does have yep. some Tosgrilisks, but I don't think they're going to be sufficient. They'll just no, they're not going to do anything. They might kill some stewards at the most. Okay, we're waiting on it. He's actually going for the glassing here. Yeah. Oh, no. The I'm sorry, your own army is going to walk into it. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, boy. What can you do with this? Chandler is like, fuck this particular Star Sovereign. Uh, you know, it doesn't It doesn't really it's do It's almost anything. not even worth trading at that point. Yeah, at least pull back and use your range, right? Now the Nidus is going to go down. And Amaranth did survive. It was uh, sort of near the area. Engram going down at uh, 3 o'clock there for Hapsaya. He's still thinking about the defensive move, but he doesn't realize how low Shambler's military actually is in yeah. terms of its efficacy. In terms of its quantity. Shambler is... Absolutely fucked. I had this game, and then Pete decided I didn't. Hmm. 
Another way of saying oh, skillish. Wait for it. Ah, ah. <laughs> Typing. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever went down during that pause, I hope wasn't too serious because you know, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. He, uh, he said he thinks that he had that game, but you know what that means? It means we go to game five on Otherworld. Well, that was silly. That was definitely very silly. It was nice to see Hapsaya be very common collected about his engagements. Maybe almost too common collected. I felt like there was points he could have pushed it, but... He didn't, and, you know, he just played it safe and worked out. Worked out very well. <laughs> Apparently from chat, Hub uh, stayed in that game and Glass Chambler's main. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like pause spamming or something, you know. Some VM yeah, there. Yeah, kind of. Some VM there. All right, boys. We're going to be doing it. Game five, Otherworld. Now, so far, the replays seem totally fine. Uh, obviously, beyond the fact that we just casted yellow versus yellow, but that's nothing new. And here we have you. It's lagging. Yeah, it says waiting for players. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. All right, That's we funny. got Hapsaya in the top right and the Shambler in the bottom right. Canada moments aside, this is about to be surely epic. This must be the, the most epic match. Of I the mean, moment. look at the colors. We've got piss and shit. I mean, what more could you ask for? <laughs> it's <laughs> piss and shit. Look at, look at Shambler. Look at him. It's a six it's pool. Coming. It's a six it's a pool, six baby. Pool. Let's see if Ananzi actually gave him the necessary lessons. I think he might have the read. He's putting the pylon in the mineral line. Well, yeah. behind the mineral line. Again, but. this is somewhat of an awkward spot, but, uh, you know, depending on how he follows up, it could just work. He can also possibly drill this as well. But, you know, what's kind of interesting is that Shambler is... Uh, Spending money on workers at the moment. So mm. he's not... I don't think he's going to quite be able to build six deaths out of this. Yeah, he's... It'll I, be a little delay. I wonder if it's like a least. faint or something, right? He's going to pop and he'll have enough for two. Yeah, he'll have enough for two. And then the, the third will be a little delay. So that gives Hapsaya the chance to... Little, little crucial seconds here to prepare. Which uh, will be scouted. You know, it's so weird. Shambler told me that he thinks it's horrible to go Zeths first. Right? That's what yeah. he told me. He said he's like, you gotta go quasis if you're gonna do this. Alright, well, let's well, see if he's right about that. It's on route. A fourth let's one, see. actually. He's he's going in on it. It's not just the six larva initially, right? I think yeah. maybe he's uh had uh, he's trying to untilt. He's trying to figure out what I he don't can know. do. This is I mean, other world, I guess, is particularly susceptible to this because the base distance it's two spawns, and it's not, like, tremendously huge. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised we didn't see, like, a super fast warden. Yeah. To, like, put a timer on Chandler's aggression here. Because these can just go for the back. Like, this is precisely what I said could happen in the first game. Yeah. Is that this isn't the best way to do this. Well, it puts another pylon down. I mean, what are you going to do? Attack the uh, attack the gateway the whole time. Yeah, like, this isn't... Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not a good spot for this just because of that. All right. Well, the scribes are going to be pulled to the side. We got more scribes coming in from the other side. Now oh. trying to drill to be defensive. This is actually that's a StarCraft II trick. If people don't know, you can go inside the hole between minerals and then just tickle on the way out. But. A lot of the, the Zats have taken damage here. Yeah. So that they're kind of for zealots out. Not dead, but and more Zats coming. It's it's just seven workers right now to fourteen. Remember that. If Again, it's really showing like a lot of discipline on, on Hapsaya's behalf that he yeah. didn't like immediately drop a warden with this. Yeah, and I, I mean, we'll see if that comes back to bite him, right? But I think when he sees more and more Zeths, he's probably going to be like, okay, this is a very all-in position. I can afford to put the warden down. Second Zealot out increases the likelihood of some kind of sort of push here, but two Vorbs have joined the fray. We, have, we still have Zeth Records coming. No. Yeah. Chandler's on seven workers right now. Yeah, he has not budged but on the workers. His resources count. are pretty good because it's actually the larvae that are going to be screwing him over in this. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'm frozen completely. Yeah, don't worry. It's just your internet. Here come the workers. They say, fuck you, Canada. Zealots are already going down. The scribes are being pulled to try to deal with this. Oh, a bunch of them have gone down, but it's okay. Remember, he's still more than double Chandler's workers. And look at that. He's even going to... Oh, one more attack from the scribe would have killed that Zeth. He has to hold... He's adding a warden now. 
The Nexus can go down. Zealot here. Trying to do some damage. <laughs> There's a Dracodin coming. I don't know about that one. Well, he needs to get range on oh, here because he can't engage with the melee, right? Yeah. So. I mean, it's rough, right? He can't really drill on anything. There's so many Zeths. Is Shambler going to do it? Is Shambler going to kill the out. Nexus? Yeah. He can all in. That's it. XD! <laughs> but here comes the Dracodin. Okay, wait. Hold on. I know this This is retarded, but you can... Oh, never mind. Uh, Amazing. I know. You're going to say he, he can, you can all in. Yeah. You cancel that ward and make a Zealot walk across the map, but... Amazing. Yeah. It would have been really hard to do because he could have just had more by then. Well, <laughs> well, boys, I did not expect it to end that way. I didn't really know stupid. if it was going to go that way. But that look dumb. at that. The man here, the man on your screen, he just got absolutely slapped by none other than the Shambler. That was I don't know. I feel like he could have gone for the warden first on that. Like, it, like a, as soon as he saw the eggs, yeah, build the warden because he had it enough, but yeah. he he didn't really feel like he needed it. But again, I was saying this in the very first match. That position for the pylon yeah. is just not good. Like, that's not a good spot for it for that exact reason. I think it's okay to have the gate there because it's more durable, but mm -hmm. the pylon is not and it will die and it died and that's like crucial seconds that he lost and crucial resources which could have gone into an early warden or you know if he really wanted like a second gateway or something like that but yeah sadly despite his best efforts he got xd'd he did get xd'd i mean i like the xd though that's one way to say it at the end xd dude xd'd now <laughs> mask <laughs> I joined Dead and Fest's game just to type XD by the way yeah yeah well why not why not do it I mean you should too to be honest I should but that would re involve putting unnecessary sounds in the background of our voices and I would never do such a thing oh well, then they would never hear us well there you go we have the upper bracket slated here Nablime and the Shambler will be taking each other on in the upper final that is a match that will most likely be played uh, soon, and we will cast that from replays, I think, this Friday. And maybe they'll be available on Friday to do it live. We'll see. But if not, we can, of course, do it from replays in post. That will determine the first grand finalist. And then from there, we will get to see what happens after that. But I, I'm pretty excited about that. And I think uh, it's it, it's just a it, it's cool to see that Hapsea wound up doing... What both of his playoff sets so far have been five games. Like that, you know. There's something going on there where he's. I don't know that you would necessarily favor him, but uh, I think when you go back to the rematch versus Hamster, it's it's going to be a lot more on Hamster's side. Like, can Hamster tighten up his play? Uh, you know, is, is he going to learn from this and try to do the mm -hmm. the six pool or seven pool? He's going to six pool every match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. shades of Hamster pool. Shades of Keen, right there. You know, Sixter. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely interesting. I wouldn't... I, I don't know. I, I thought after the macro games went his way, he had the momentum to do the reverse sweep. That's another sort of narrative, actually, from this set, is that when we look at the Shambler, when we look at uh, Hamster, right, the opponents that have has faced so far, both of his playoffs set, not only did they go five games, the winner of the series won the first two games and then almost got reverse swept, right? Hapsaya did that against <laughs> Hamster. He almost got reverse swept and then staved him off. And then Shambler did that here where he lost those two games. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. We even got to see Sovereleths. I uh, love to see that. Mm -hmm. And apparently there was some funny interaction uh, between Shields stealing from Amaranth and the, uh, a the what was it? The life stealing from the Tetsorakors. I mean, what's the problem oh. with that? I don't, so what? <laughs> they just fight forever. What's the big deal? So. I don't think stewards leave corpses. No, they don't. That's sad. The old uh, Matrilith would have loved that. I remember all the games against Kian where he just had, like, bio, and I just flew in with, like, one, and I just made, like, 50 Rilla Warcores after my army died, and the Rilla Warcores killed everything. It was <laughs> I mean, they might actually leave some kind of rubble, but um, they can't be revived, obviously, right? So, let's see. Yeah, it looks like they don't leave a corpse, so. What a shame. 
Santa Pested is fighting somebody called Open Shit. Yeah, that's in all lowercase. That's an Ansi. That's uh, the guy who six pooled oh. Hepsey every game. It was not enough. <laughs> it was not enough practice. Yeah, well, it's very possible he didn't like pressure the pylon as much. So Hepsey might have thought that can work. Mm. But, like the first game, Shandler didn't do that. Yeah. But in this game, he definitely realized, wait a second, I can just go around. And then suddenly you can't drill it. Yeah. You need, you need to be able to drill it for that Absolutely. that kind of thing to work. So, it, it, yeah. The trap zealot didn't really help either. But by that it was point, funny. it kind of didn't make a big difference. Yeah. It, it, it helped yeah, us. Yeah, being stuck is always funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, looking at the way that this has gone, we've got the lower bracket already set up for Elimination 2A and 2B. It's Veek mm -hmm. and I Sarcasm rematch. It's Hapsea and Hamster rematch. Again, mm. this is actually the first time we've ever had something like this where the quarterfinals are rematches mm. later on for both players, right? That The one time it did happen was actually... The, it, it happened the one time, and it was Nablime versus Three Crow where they had multiple matchups against each other uh, because Three Crow made it past Biddy Bee. But beyond that, I'm assuming there's a six pool going on in that game. Uh, no, that infested is uh, trying to anchor rush. Oh. Zerg and his, it, he, he almost got punked by the Drollets. His Maverick survived with five health. And the second one unfortunately died to the Circuit in the gnat that he ran past to try to get into the anchor. But the anchor nonetheless has a Maverick in it that is currently shooting his starting at Drollets. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. Every single game in this is just goofy in its own right. Yeah. Like, it's... It, it it there is just so many different silly things that can happen. That's the beauty of gaming, dude. Yeah. We go into the Gamer upper bracket, Nablime versus the Shambler. I mean, tell me you guys aren't excited for that matchup. That's kind of like the 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 trash talk matchup in a way that Nablime isn't really a trash talker per se, but he's just like, yeah, I'm not worried about Shambler. And then Shambler is like, he's got to get in on that. Yeah, I'm not really dude, worried. He's about Australian. <laughs> the dude has access to some of the most diverse and silly slang in the entire world. He needs to start using it. We need to start hearing Australian slang. There should be a rule that every time Nablime goes into a game or says anything in an interview, it has to be all dirty Australian slang. And he has to start just using slang for like every second word that he says. I mean, why not? That would add some much needed character to the tournament. Yeah, I figured there was going to be a six pool or some kind of all in in that last game, Luciferius, because I think Chandler realized that he actually can't handle the end game at that point. Hmm. In that, because like he, that's kind of what killed him. It wasn't really like the unit compositions or like any individual fight, but it was like he wasn't able to keep macroing and keep expanding, and like keep his money up. Particularly in gas, he was really struggling with gas to keep yeah. up with the solver list and everything like that. Whereas Hepsio was also struggling as well, but not as much. And then that momentum is kind of what killed Shambler. It, it's kind of like my earlier games against him when I was able to. Uh, particularly infinite velocity where we'd have late games and I would start to outscale him later on because that's the point he'd start tapering off. Yeah, he kind of gasses out after a certain point, right? Yeah. To borrow that term from uh, MMA and stuff. It's like yeah. you go for a long slugfest of a game and there's certain players... We were actually having this conversation at the end of one of the Gauntlet casts, which I'm reminded of because I was editing that VOD recently. and It's, yeah. uh, it's exactly that. It's like you know certain people have the late game activation uh, or at least they maintain yeah. that energy throughout the whole set. And then other people, you can really tell. Uh, it's mark it's very notable when the, the gassing out occurs, right? So I think that when you have a game like that and you win through that, you have to expect the next game is going to be something like a six pool. Yeah, or some kind of really, really, really gambit, right? That, yeah. But, but you have to accept that because the player, especially a higher level player that runs into that, is going to be like, oh, okay, I lost because of this specifically. Mm. Like That's really like the thing that really unraveled them at that point. Yeah. And so you have to expect at that point. And I honestly think that even going a warden first in that, that next game might have even been a very good call in the context of that series because you expect that kind of all-in. It could have easily just been Nats or something on top of it, too. It could have been, like, double Nath opening or something. So you have to kind of, like, read that, which I think Hepsai kind of did because of his building placement. But unfortunately, he still got punked by it. I am very much looking forward to seeing how these players adapt in the future of the t the tournament, right? Like, looking at how the Shambler did that, 
his victories came from it felt like just Hepsea forgetting the lessons that he learned versus Hamster or trying something very different than what he did that found success versus Hamster. And by then there's no margin of error. Like I think he had pretty decisive game on Victory Square and Sideshow yep. is more contested, but provided a like a you know a window into the victory conditions that could happen. It's like, okay, Shambler's not capable of meeting me in the macro sense, or at least that's what like those two games kind of um, said. At the very least, I mean, Victory Square was like more early advantage, and then he just kept it going until the end of the game. And uh, Sideshow was a lot more like, okay, we, we trade back and forth a little bit, and I, I just end up playing the resultant situation better consistently enough over time. And that's cool because it shows a lot of diversity within the tech tree and stuff, and it shows like certain the tendencies of the players. But I think if the first two games hadn't gone so poorly for like the early move out or like the bad building positioning or whatever, mm -hmm. then like Hapsaya might have had a chance to take one of those early games, and then we would have been talking yep. about him make meeting the blind instead because you know like that's just sort of the the vibe I get is that if you allow it to go to a macro game that doesn't end in you know five ten minutes. Like, that's a situation where Hapsaya is going to be able to, to win the day. That's what it seems like right now. Uh, against Hamster, it was a little bit different. I think Hamster's macro is a little bit better than the Shambler's. But it was more about, like, again, um, unit uh, compositions and sort of experimenting. And then, like, there's some critical decision-making errors that happened on Infinite Velocity 2 where Hamster wasn't able to close out that set with the reverse sweep. But nonetheless, looking at the way that this is, like, that matchup is evolving in an interesting fashion where obviously if it turns out that like, for example, the, the super fast pool or whatever is like, why would you never, like there's no reason to ever not do it. Or like the majority of games you can do it and not really have much of, an, uh, of a punish. Then I think, yeah, that's something we should look into. But in that last game, the other world was not like that. Other world was like a combination of weird Sim City from Hapsaya. And then again, seven workers the entire time. It was entirely all in situation from Shambler. And if the mm -hmm. warden comes up sooner to break that, then you just have such a, a, a monumentous advantage. So definitely something mm -hmm. that I think is, uh, you know, I look at that and I think, yeah, pretty solid, pretty good stuff. So happy that uh, Shambler was able to make it out. Uh, happy that Hapsaya was able to show that he's the better macro player. At least that's what it seems like right now. And we'll have to see mm -hmm. if uh, Shambler's macro woes continue in a series against Nablime, who's very happy to just build 300 Masons, as we all know. So mm -hmm. Maybe Shambler and Nablime will have like a gentleman's handshake and they just do like nothing but building workers and like they only start building any tech structures after like 20, 30 minutes. Mm. Well, they, they go straight to tier three, both of them, and then they build their first production structure. Yeah. 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 Could happen. Yeah, those matches were definitely like if Shambler was able to throw Hupsaya off early on in like the first, like it was specifically that second attack generally, mm. it was going to be Shambler's match to win. But if he didn't, then Hupsaya gained a lot of momentum. And But it was in like two different ways that Hupsaya ended up winning, which was first off at the back of the lattice pressure, which gave him a lot of initiative early on. And then after that, in the second game, it was off of the architect pressure. And in both cases, Shambler was able to hold that but since he wasn't able to get a lot of steam in those matches, he, uh, he ended up being on the defensive for a lot of them. He was able to get some attacks in, and while he was able to destroy, you know, a couple bases, he wasn't able to actually deal really... Made, like, in both cases, they destroyed or slowed down or did damage to bases. They were fledgling bases that were just being built, and in both cases, he wasn't even able to fully finish them off. Mm. Like, the three, third clock position in Sideshow... He wasn't able to fully completely... He wasn't able to destroy like the aquifers and stuff like that. So a lot of the investment that went into it, it just kind of bounced back. And the Milos weren't even able to finish off the Nexus. And then in the other match in Victory Square, when he went for the 6 o'clock, it was just like a couple defenses and a scribe that he killed. So Chandler was not able to deal damage to Hapsaya at that point. He wasn't able to really like slow down his, his growing momentum. And Hapsaya isn't like the kind of person to go and expand like two or three times at once and just try to take over the map when he when he has a whole bunch of money he kind of like sits on the money and then just starts spending it on units after a while and then what kind of the interaction with that was is that chambler would expand but a lot of his units would end up dying and then the investment wouldn't quite materialize in the same manner so hapsaya just slowly took over the worker count in victory square slowly took over the worker count and then eventually the economic game within Sideshow and he just kind of kept his army alive. And Sideshow 
He had a very pointed strategy to just keep recalling stuff and just keep his units from dying as long as possible. And even if there were advantageous situations as a result of whatever he was fighting in, I'm just watching some very tismic stuff right now. Uh, they, they had to immediately leave a game because he was like, sorry, I only know the map derelict. <laughs> so this <laughs> is some funny shit. But um, no, it, it was like Shambler really needed that early momentum. Otherwise, like the general long term strategies of Hapsaya were just working out a lot better. And his general approach in the matches that he won felt, again, very methodical. Hmm. And that's kind of the stuff where Chandler started to really struggle against with, like, Mystery Meat. Is when Mystery Meat would adapt in matches and start going, like, Goliath Cleric and had, like, a very methodical approach to the way that Chandler was playing. That's kind of what Hapsaya was doing. Yeah, that's right. So it was, like, the little small things that kept adding up and giving him more and more and more and more advantage... Until it reached the point where even though Shambler was still 3 and massing Sovereless and stuff like that, it still wasn't enough to do any more than slow down Hupsai's momentum at that stage in the game. So I suppose that's like the comfort level from having played for so long and at such a high level, even in something very unrelated. This is some really autistic shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... I really hope this Nathan guy starts competing because, man, this is this, like, drone drilling. Like, there was a massive, like, Mason quasi, just, like, full-on fucking medieval war going on. There is a single, like, Zeth just getting bounced around in Masons for a full-on, like, 20 seconds. This is silly. And, <laughs> like, the, the six pools... And the discussions to come from it. I kind of honestly expected it just to be like six pool, like three out of four games for Shambler, where he like drops one match, like he doesn't six pool, and he says, fuck it, I'm going to six pool everything. That's kind of what I was expecting out of those matches. But now that I've seen what the six pool was, it was like, ah, eh. you know, maybe Zaths and Vorovs are a little strong, but I don't think I would base it exclusively off of that match with the way that match played up. It's probably more like, Maybe Vorovs shouldn't have one armor, or maybe the move speed should be a little slower or something. But unfortunately, uh, the pylon placement in that last match really particularly screwed Hapsai over in that. And maybe the reluctance to build a warden and try to punish it. But I mean, at the same time, it was like Shambler had seven workers and was still actually floating money at that point because he just didn't have the larva to do anything. It was the fact that Hapsai wasn't able to actually kill military units at that point, so they just kept, like, stacking up. And then eventually the Vorovs came out, and then that really, like, killed the Zealots. So there was a few interactions you could really spend a long time thinking about in that particular match, but... It was still a, an interesting and a very silly match. And uh, definitely all I really expected of these two players coming together. I expected more aggressive typing. Hmm. I don't know what happened to Shambler that caused the pause, but... Uh, Yes, he wasn't in the mood Hopefully to type anymore, anymore I guess. Serious, right? Not not much anyway. Yeah. So. There wasn't there wasn't nearly enough like salt mm. and like whining going on for my taste. I would have expected more. I guess it all got like Hapsaya's stream chat must have been where it all got like sucked <laughs> into. So like Hapsai and Shamler could only be good manner because all the salt had already been drained from them. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean obviously Fagudo's here with the, the chat relay so he's 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 sharing some details of it but it's kind of secondary to the ordeal that we're actually looking at so you know i i think Hapsaya will definitely have time to prepare a little bit uh prior to these matches uh, <laughs> chat was trolling him by telling him how to be successful googling it <laughs> He should have Googled out of Vita. That's that's amazing. Honestly, if he found something, he could probably ask Chat GPT. You know? Yeah, I think his any response he get would just be monumentally autistic. Dude, I am watching Blackjack's fighting maths. Yeah. We are seeing things I have again never seen before. Well that's the the yeah. listen, dude, there's fifty units per race. You gotta have yeah. something like that. There's always something a little different, huh? Yeah. Well, as things continue to evolve with CMBW, of course, there will probably be some people who uh, rock up here with better general mechanics and an affinity for one race over the other and then just show 
holy shit, this thing looks really busted. But we're going to wait and see. We're going to wait and see. I know some people have misgivings about certain things with Zerg specifically. Funnily enough, it's only Protoss who think that Zerg is OP. The, the Blime seems to not give a shit. <laughs> so, and Mystery yeah. Meat. Well, Mystery Meat said that the, they might be the most powerful. But he was like, that was just sort of a guess of his. They're very flexible. Yeah. Is the, the Really, the big thing is Zerg are way more flexible than the others. Yeah. The only thing that Protoss have that's really flexible to Zerg early on is the Lattice. But it still is not like the Larva interaction. Hmm. But I guess depending on who you ask, half of Zerg's flexibility doesn't mean anything because Hydra is for noobs. Yes. Yeah, even though I think Victory Square would have been held a lot more competitively if he had gone for the Hydra earlier. But no, he just mm. needs that tier two. You need that tier two. So we'll see how things go, man. We'll see how things go. But I'm excited to see what Nablime does to Shambler, and I'm excited to see how uh, the rematches in our elimination bracket go. Yeah. So that'll that'll be nice. That'll be interesting. And then, of course, we'll have the uh, penultimate elim lower bracket game, Elimination 3, by the way. But <laughs> I don't know if you caught this, Mask, but Hapseo was talking about CMBW. He was shilling it on his stream uh, two days ago. I don't watch streams. No, so no, no. I'm, but there was a, a particular... I, I saw mentions about the yeah, shilling, yeah. There was a particular moment where he just goes, Dude, Cosmonarchy Brood War, a game by Pronogo and Veek 3. <laughs> <laughs> So, I love that. Well, now he has to be Veek 3. He does. It must happen. Yep. So. Pretty good stuff. I'm watching Backjack spin aggressively. Spinning aggressively is something that that Zealot did in the first game, so it's too bad that we didn't see it. Yeah, I liked it. He got him spinning at least, right? Yeah. Like, he was there, but he was spinning, so. Yeah, yeah. That's moral support. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm happy that we get to see... The evolution of the matchups and i'm also happy that like I, I know i've said this in the past before but it's it's real it's like if people are like oh my god something's broken and it, if it actually is then great we, we uh can fix it. we can fix it like I'm, I'm excited to find out what people discover yeah so like finding out something is broken and balanced isn't even necessarily a bad thing it's like you learn why it's broken and balanced you yeah. fix it yeah and then you know, in the future, you're armed with a bit more knowledge. Yeah. And that's how you're going to come up with a good product is by having this understanding. Like, if something is absolutely broken, then and somebody, like, hides it and doesn't use it and just brings it up, whatever, then that's kind of not very effective. But if, like, everybody's going to six-pool every single game, then that's not even necessarily bad. That's kind of like when there was, like, Every game is fucking Naths. Yeah. Naths and Vassals every single game. <laughs> so it's like, well, you could just go back to the tried and true standard of making error only tier two. You know, I might have considered that. But then, you know, I had tier one error in my concept. And it was like, how am I going to balance this? Because mm -hmm. it's kind of busted. Well, you can just find ways of balancing out their stat budget that they aren't, like, completely overwhelming. Yeah. The Shambler Zeth just died. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Zeth. No, I think... The biggest thing for me is that is to not overreact because mm -hmm. it feels bad when people are like, you know, maybe in histrionics or they have like a exaggerated way of describing things or, or maybe it really is that bad in their mind. And so they're like, this is horrible. This is the worst thing. So as the designer, as the main author of the project, obviously it's going to feel bad when people say stuff like that. Uh, and so then there's the natural reaction of, well, if there's a problem, then I should fix it. But you got to identify, is there a reaction that people don't know about? Like, with the six pool thing, I suspect maybe there's a, obviously a possibility that it ends up being, like, a default option versus Protoss specifically that is just too powerful. And it might morph Protoss reactions in a way that's untenable or undesirable for the game. But there might also just be a reaction that is totally reasonable that is yet to be determined as far as, like, you know, here's what's useful, here's what's good versus it. And that makes it just totally, like, a bad thing for the Zerg to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if that's true. There could be something that we're just not seeing. Uh, and if there isn't, if, like, we let it sit for a little bit, like, say, over the tournament break, like, half of that break, we still play some games and we still see the six pool being really effective or whatever, that's great. That's something that I can say, okay, well... Seems like we're not able to find any solution, no matter how hard we try to like come up with a conceptual thing and then test that and then see if it works. So if that's going to be the case, then yeah, we should probably like I don't know, slightly reduce the Zethercore movement speed or address the build time of the the pool itself or something like that. 
and then just make it so that you have to commit a little bit more. Uh, that that could be a thing, right? But like, I'm not gonna make a knee jerk reaction because the whole idea is that you know people have to come up with these strategies and then they have to test these strategies, and then there's the reaction to that, and that's that's the beautiful side of of, of like a game essentially being quote unquote balanced by the reactions of of the different players trying to win. And we've never really been in a stage where you have super high level competitors trying to do that. So no matter how bad it gets revealed to be in any capacity, I think it's a good idea to sort of just keep keep your distance on that. There's plenty of other things we can work on in the interim while we figure out what might settle, where the balance might settle. And it's just a natural ebb and flow of things, right? So I'm, uh, I'm happy to let it evolve organically. And then from there sort of guide that evolution in, in one direction or another afterwards. Uh, into a more desired outcome if it's not there already. So that's sort of my general philosophy on it. But I think that these, I don't think these games were like defined by early Zeth aggression in the way that it was unwinnable for the Protoss. It's just mm -hmm. there were certain decisions made like positioning of buildings and move outs and stuff that, and also, you know, like it definitely structured feels choice. volatile. Right, yeah. But I, I, that's I just like really at the it, big like, takeaway from it yeah. is like, it may not be imbalanced per se, but it can definitely feel volatile. And that can really alter your perception of it too. Well, it's just like when new, less experienced players than say Hapsea or Shambler are playing and then they think that they're really far behind, but actually they're like double the worker count or whatever. And it's like, no, if you just hold this, you're, you're in a pretty good spot. Um, there are so, so many blackjacks. Don't worry, dude, it's poker They're just time. murdering Lakizalisks and, and everything. This is horrible. How can this happen? They're good. They're OP, just like Cyclops. <laughs> so, with all that said, I think we can close out the session there. Thank you, Mess, for joining me once again. And yep. for those watching at home, remember we have more series coming your way. We'll cast them this Friday, and then we'll finish the whole tournament on Saturday. That's the current plan. We'll hope we can stick to it with scheduling and all that. So, mm. stay tuned, and uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be fun. Yep. Smoke weed every day. <laughs>